Uh, Patrick uh, Dixon, I, I, I wrote a few things down about this uh, remarkable man. Uh, Patrick, uh, he's married. Um, Sheila is his wife, and they have some kids, and some are very talented musicians, by the way. Um, but Patrick is actually um, a trained physician, like a, a, a medical doctor. He has been in his career uh, involved a, lo a lot in, in treating cancer patients, and then later into AIDS. He was very influential in, in, in some of the AIDS pre prevention, wrote books about it, started organizations about this. So, but in the, the last years, he, is, he's really, he has become like an influencer, I would say. He's a futurist or a futuro, futu, futurol, whatever, a futurist, <laughs> futurologist. Uh, that's a, such a funny word. But, you know, this is exactly one of the talents that God has given him. And he develops this and he reads like crazy. He knows what, he understands what's happening in our world in ways that probably you and I don't. Because it's his gift, it's his, it has his interest. And God has really used him to speak to governments, to speak to large corporations um, at the Davos Summit, you know, some of those uh, places. That's, that's where he goes and, and he shares of his understanding of, of the world and how companies can maybe change their strategies to be more effective. So it's, and he's a disciple of Jesus. I've heard Patrick for the first time um, in 2012 here actually in the factory when he had a global leadership gathering, and I was just amazed about his wisdom, um, just to share uh, from the insight and the discernment he has received from God about what's happening in our world. So it's a, it's a real treat to have Patrick with us. And um, he said, my time is a gift to YRM. I, I love to be with you uh, today. And so, so uh, thank you so much, Patrick, for that generosity. Uh, that's uh, super. He's also very, uh, he's a very quick thinker very animated speaker. He will just, I mean, the platform he is, is not so big, but he will use every bit of space he gets <laughs> to move around. Um, so Patrick has prepared for, for this morning, uh, I think a, a really special session with a, a couple of, of items he's, he's gonna present to us. And they'll be challenging and good things. Um, with a lot of information supporting that, but also with an invitation. And he will include some of us from the crowd as well in his, uh, in his, um, in his morning program. If you want to look up a website, uh, just Google Patrick Dixon and you will get to the, the globalchange.com website. And um, there are like 60 million unique visitors that have visited his website. That's not a small number. 60 million, 9 million video views. I mean, you see a lot of, of uh, speeches from him on that, uh, on that site. It's just a lot of fun. So globalchange.com. What else, Patrick? <laughs> Are you ready to go? <laughs> I've never had such a long introduction. You can tell there's a technical problem. <laughs> I thought if he carries on anymore, I won't recognize myself. <laughs> I, run out of, I run out of text now. <laughs> so, um, but if, if you need a few more minutes, we can just maybe talk in pairs. And <laughs> <laughs> I would like you to stand up <laughs> and just get some oxygen into your lungs. We're going to go, thank you. <laughs> We're going to go on a journey into the future together. And uh, we're going to have an exciting time. And you know, the most important voices we're going to hear are yours. We're going to hear some people. I've met some fantastic people last night. Uh, it's, uh, I was last here in 2012. It was uh, 2012 in this place. But also we met together as in the Netherlands and so on. And it's just been so wonderful to meet different people, different ministries here, and uh, who are already doing amazing things in different parts of Europe. I was so excited last night, Dick, to be here worshiping. I, I had to stop worshiping and take a video. <laughs> and it's been all over, it's been to our church, it's been on, on Facebook, and just, uh, just giving thanks for uh, 300 people from 28 nations who are giving their lives to Jesus Christ to see this, the, his kingdom come, his glory shine, his name be known, hallelujah. 
Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> uh, okay, turn around three times. Get some oxygen into your lungs. Jump up and down. Be mindful of your neighbor. <laughs> Alrighty, there's the Norwegian sweaters here, very beautiful. Uh, why don't we just sit down again and I'll just pray for, for Patrick. Again, I love the sense of humor this guy has and he's, this, this man has, this guy, <laughs> this man. He's also very much involved in the, in the church community and his denomination and in lots of, in lots of different areas, um, lots of initiatives. So he's a man of God. And Lord, we thank you for Patrick and for his love for you and um, his obedience to your call in this life to be an influencer for your kingdom's sake. And we just pray, Lord, for your anointing to rest upon him through your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. It's such a joy to be here. And a hello to you, those of you who are hidden behind the corner. Give me a wave. <laughs> and the other side as well. We're going on one journey together. Why? Because we're weird. <laughs> so, I want to go on and look at some signs of the times. Uh, that's my job. It's uh, what I do. I work with, uh, mainly with very large companies uh, in the top 2,000 companies globally, helping them to understand what tomorrow might be and to get ready. And I always say this, either you take hold of the future or the future takes hold of you. <laughs> you understand that? Either you can say, oh, these trends are coming. What should YWAM do? Or you say, actually, we're about creating the future, creating new future for refugees, for uh, single parent mothers, for young people who have been homeless. Uh, whatever it is, we create the future. Isn't that right? Amen? Amen? So let's go on a journey to change the future, not just to look at what it might be, yeah? So, um, and you know, it, it's just, it has been wonderful to worship together, absolutely wonderful. And I want to center on this word together because it's going to be fundamental to change in the future. We cannot do it on our own. It's no good just to saying, oh yes, with the Lord's help, I can do everything. Yes, but he calls us to march in step together. And it is out of the unity that the change will happen for why won't. So my job is to put on glasses a pair of glasses, and to try and understand what is happening. The trouble is that my glasses are distorted, and so are yours. Because I'm a man, I'm British, that really distorts things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm 66 years old, that is also distorts things. So I have to be careful. Whose glasses am I putting on? And so I pray for you and for me that we put on the glasses of the Lord Jesus Christ today and that we are able to see and to discern, as we heard earlier. And the first thing I'd say is this, when we consider the future, uh, the really great challenge for us is to remain focused on Jesus himself. It's easy to be distracted by the noise around us, whether it's the WhatsApp that's in your pocket waiting to be read, whether it's uh, your emails, uh, whatever it is, or just what's in your smartphone, it's easy to be distracted. But the writer to Hebrews calls us to fix our eyes on Jesus. And as we do that, we will discover our destiny, which is our future. Yeah? And that is the key to the spiritual discernment. We were talking about that earlier. The key to spiritual discernment, that there is no other is to fix our eyes on Jesus. Because when we do that, everything else becomes clear. And you know, it is, I, you know, I thought of many trends I could bring you today. I'm not going to talk about artificial intelligence. We can later on. There, and there will be, uh, may be opportunity for you to ask questions. But you know, there are lots of trends I have left out. 
But I'd say this, it's easy to lose focus and easy to think that your ministry has to change completely, everything has changed, everything is confusing. But I, I say this, I've studied the future for 25 to 30 years now. I've written 17 books about the future. I, I, when I, I, wrote, uh, I, I when my, wrote my last book on the future, uh, I phoned my publisher, I said, I have a problem. He said, what's that? I just thought I should read books I've written uh, in the past just to check how they came out. <laughs> And I, I coated it up, uh, a red, that was terrible. <laughs> got that completely wrong. Green, fantastic, praise God. I got something right. Uh, and yellow looks like it's happening, or it's going to happen still. I said, I've, I've got a problem. I read the book, Futurewise, which I wrote in 1998. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'd like to copy and paste huge sections of it and put it in the new book. <laughs> he said, what? Because actually, when we look at the big trends, they are things which will last 20, 30, 40 years. They're even bigger than President Putin, okay? <laughs> All right. They're big trends. And these big trends endure. And in 1998 um, through to 2018 is only 20 years. So we're only 20 years through a 50-year view. So, of course, I want to cut and paste the same stuff and put it in again. I'm just saying, my friends, that take to breathe when you think oh, too much... Watching too much TV news can make you physically sick. Did you know that? It is a version of the truth. It isn't the truth. Here is the truth. Jesus is the same. <laughs> Yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, verse 8. And actually, uh, from the commercial point of view, for most companies, uh, their strategies actually can continue from five-year period to another five-year period. Why? Because they are creating the future. Microsoft is writing the future in software. Uh, General Electric is creating the future in technology. Uh, we are c these companies create the future, and the future changes much less than you think. Okay? Um, when we look at Scripture, uh, there is one word, as I've been preparing for today, and considering your movement, there is one word which has been sitting on my heart uh, more strongly than any other. I believe it is the key to YWAM's future. It is a biblical command. It is a biblical ministry. And it is rooted, I discovered on arriving, into your mission statement and your values. It has been the foundation, a foundation stone of the YWAM movement. And wherever I go in the world, and whenever I talk on Zoom to church leaders around the world and so on, I am always talking about this same word. What is this single word? It's in Romans 12. It's hospitality, of course. Is it, why, why, now you, you can say, well, okay, you know, there are lots of trends, lots of issues. Patrick, why is it so important? I hope to reveal to you why this particular word, I believe, will be the biggest driver. This single word will be the biggest driver for you in terms of mission, evangelism, discipleship, training, uh, acceleration of leadership development. I'm going to reveal to you two things that I believe will double the effectiveness of your own ministry in the next five years. One of them is hospitality, and another I will reveal at the end is how to drive that, okay? So I, I learned something else. When I was started off as a physician, I was a hospice doctor looking after people dying of cancer at home in London. And I learned something. When you go into someone's home who is dying, you can see them in clinic for 30 years. But when you go across their front door into their home, in 30, 30 seconds, I have learned more about my patient than in 30 years seeing them in the clinic. Why? Because their homes leak data to me. Everything of their life is around them. That is why it's so special to help people to die at home. If they're on their way to meeting their maker, to be in their own home, surrounded by all their own stuff, their history, their memories, and everything. Homes are sacred places, my friends. They are places where uh, our, the very soul of our being is. <laughs> That's why it's home. It's called home with a capital H. It's my home. It may not be much, but it's my home. It's my room, my desk, my stuff. And when we invite people in to experience our stuff, it's quite threatening. It's quite exposing. That's why most people before COVID didn't like having the camera on during FaceTime calls for work. Why? Because you leak so much data. They see that you've got a dog. They see the unwashed washing up at the sink. 
Put your hands up if you've sometimes been embarrassed about what the camera might see on a FaceTime call. <laughs> put, yes, put your hands up if you use the blur function sometimes. Okay. See, see, it's because you don't want people to come into your home. <laughs> okay. It's true. You're locking them out of your home. Say, so I want them to. I want to pretend I'll be in the office. Yeah. But I'm saying that it's a sacred thing when you allow people into your home. They see something of your soul. And of course, you are the aroma of Christ. Hebrews also says this. You are the aroma of Christ. You, you are, to, the, to those who are not being saved, you have a stench of death. But to those who are in the kingdom or being saved, you are the aroma of life, of eternity. Isn't that right? So actually, as people come closer to you, they literally catch the aroma. They come into your home. They see your, the aroma of Christ. They feel it. There's something incredible that happens. I learned something else too. When the uh, AIDS hit my country in London, most of the cases were within eight miles of my home. And my entire medical practice was hijacked by a mutant virus which jumped unexpectedly from animals to humans. No cure. 100% dead. That was the situation when we started. Great fear. And we began to, t uh, I was asked to help people at home with AIDS. No one wanted to do it. The doctors didn't want to go in. The, the nurses didn't want to go in. We had to train ordinary people in our church and other churches to go into homes to help people come home. <laughs> and uh, that became a sacred ministry and became a global movement very quickly. And then we started training the home workers to go into schools and colleges and teach about healthy lifestyles and how to live and what relationships are about and how to avoid drugs and teenage pregnancy and other things like that. And today, that ministry, just in the former Soviet countries, has seen over 7 million young people a, a total attendance in classes in high schools. Isn't that fantastic? Almost all of them reached by youth evangelists just like you, are going into schools in the name of Christ, welcomed into a post-communist, anti-Christian environment. Amazing. But one thing I learned is this. Uh, that one thing I learned is this. Through looking after people um, dying of cancer, then looking after people dying of AIDS, and then uh, starting by accident, this global movement, which is today in places like, we are in places like Congo, Zimbabwe. Uh, yesterday, I was on a prayer meeting with, uh, uh, with the ministries in, in India, in, in Nigeria, in uh, Slovakia, um, in UK, Ireland, and we were united with a common theme to see God's kingdom come, to see his glory shine and his Jesus name be known in this area of social action related to HIV and AIDS worldwide. But here is what the thing I've learned is this, that life is short, my friends. If I have cared for many people who are dying at your age. How old are you? 25. Okay, too many, sadly, of cancer, HIV, lots of reasons. It teaches you that life is short. I say this at conferences with, sec with, with you know, a thousand people in marketing in Latvia or you know, 4,000 people in Las Vegas, uh, wherever. I say, I show them this slide. I say, life's too short to do things you don't believe in. Put up your hands if you think that's true. And they clap and they shout and they give us a, come on, give us a roar. And you see 4,000 people shouting and I say, thank you, Lord. Why? Because they're already questioning the value of what they do. They're thinking, what is my destiny about? Life is too short to waste a single day doing things that I don't think are important. Isn't that right? Yes? Hello? Yeah. Yes. Okay, but you can do lots of things that are important, but they're not necessarily the best things. I believe today that when you are here, the reason for being here is to rediscover the call of God on your life for the next chapter. Isn't that right? And also to work out with whom you are to travel. So uh, we have, there are people, I've already met people in this room. You need to be having conversations with each other here before you leave. There are some people here, I believe, you've been doing things that were fantastic in the very center of God's purpose for you, for the kingdom. But actually, they will not be the center of God's purpose for the next five years. You hear me? Why? Because actually, some things have changed. Some, uh, some needs have changed, other situations have changed, other leadership has come up, others, life's too short to do things that someone else can do. Isn't that true? Put up your hands if you think that's true. I've spent my life releasing people into ministry.
The AIDS ministry which we started, that's in 35 countries, I led it for three and a half years. After the third year, I handed over as the leader of that work. After um, um, another two years, I was off the board. I have been on the board intermittently. For the last 15 years, I'm not on the board. I have no letterhead. I have no title. I have no relationship. I'm not on any board of any asset globally. Hallelujah. <laughs> but I was still at the prayer meeting on Monday. What is leadership about? Is it about the piece of paper? Is it about the cloud? No. Is it about the title? No. What is your leadership? A leadership is simply, how do you know if you're a leader? <laughs> you know the only test of a leader? You look behind you and say, go away. <laughs> Where are you coming from? You say, no, we just want to hang out with you, Dick. We've come all the way around the world to spend time with you. No, 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 it's fine. <laughs> I give you, a, and then the following week, they're still there. <laughs> Why? And Dick says, well, um, get on with your life. No, 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 we, we just feel joined to your vision. And is, is that because of, you have a carrier title? No. It's because of the something that the Lord has birthed in you. Isn't that right? That is the leadership. So life's too short. I, I suggest for some of you, your leadership is going to change. That the reasons why people have been following you will change. That you're going to find people knocking on your door for new reasons. They're following you as a leader in Christ, but for a different reason. Because something new has been birthed in you. It's not to say that what you did was wrong. It's that there's a new day coming for you. There are new things for you to be doing. Uh, when uh, Sheila and I uh, led a church plant, we did it in the 1990s. I said I would do it for three years. In fact, I did it for six. Uh, I prayed over the leader. The leader, uh, of, of, uh, of the person we gave that leadership to was a, a youth evangelist who had only just become a Christian when she came to live in our home. Hospitality. Her come to live in our home. She lived in our home. She saw how we lived. Out of that, she became a youth evangelist. Uh, soon she became the senior uh, driving force in the church plant. She became the, the leader who took over the church plant. Hallelujah. <laughs> um, after that, uh, uh, Sheila and I just went back. Oh, then she took over the mother church as well. Uh, and then uh, uh, just uh, last month, Sheila and I were asked to go back to the mother church uh, to, pr to pray over her again. Uh, why? Because now she's becoming a national and international leader. So she herself is now passing on to the next generation. We feel very old. <laughs> Because isn't that exciting? That is what leadership is, isn't it? Something that we release, we give away, whatever we have. We say, Lord, I, this was good for the past, but what is it that's going to be the next chapter? Okay. Right, well, now we need to get into these trends. <laughs> okay. here's, here's, I'm going to give you the output first. I thought I'd do the trend and then tell you what it was for. I'm going to do it the other way around. <laughs> okay, the first, and I've just reordered this at the back, causing complete chaos of the technology team. Thank you. Would you give them a round of applause? They've been fantastic. <laughs> All through the previous session, I was reordering the slides. This was the problem. <laughs> so here we go. Number one, support. Why? Because of COVID. I had this number two, but I've put it number one now. Okay, support. In this post-COVID world, um, we have a pandemic of anxiety. You heard about this already. It was what I was going to talk about. A pandemic of anxiety. Uh, it's a pandemic of people who have been broken psychologically. Uh, there are um, people in our own church uh, that uh, were young people who have forgotten how to socialize. They, are, they need almost therapy to be able to go to school. Um, they, uh, I think of um, a particular individual who can't go to the, can't very easily and comfortably go into the church youth group. That's just one person. Actually, I think everyone in our church has their own stories, which is what the last session was all about. But you know what? We need to break it out of the, we need to, you know, um, it's not just sorting ourselves out. <laughs> Actually, this is a, a massive cry for help right across Europe at the moment. And it doesn't matter who you are. You know, there's a fear with every cough and cold. It's still with us. So this issue of support. And now look, this is where it's going. This is really, really important for you. 70% of people in the UK, in my country, want to make changes in their lives because of COVID. 
it's pressed the reset button in their heart. They've come back up and they are different. And they're not sure they quite like all these virtual stuff all the time. Uh, by the way, Apple, you know, it's a great conflict about, you know, whether people should be at work or not. You know, Apple discovered something. They said, we're fantastic at managing in lockdown. It's great. But we can't think. We can't innovate. And we cannot change. What's the Christian equivalent? We are struggling to hear God afresh. We are struggling to develop new patterns of ministry. And we're struggling to bring new leadership through. Uh, why? Because actually the, we have to do these things physically. We have to breathe the same air. It's really, really important. We're seeing what is called the great resignation across the U.S. In, across the U.S. at the moment, half of all those who are in office jobs want to change their jobs. And the great, uh, we're, we're talking about the great resignation. Actually, it's, it's worse than that. Um, it's, uh, uh, it's people who've checked out mentally. They're working, but they're no longer there. Um, and it's really, really important. 88% of people in Europe say that the meaning of success has changed for them. So they have a much greater focus at the moment on work-life balance, mental health, meaningful jobs. This is really important for us in our ministry. So yes, if we can get alongside people. We can offer to pray for them. But actually, it's more than that. At the moment, any ministry that you have, uh, which can be redirected, refocused, repurposed into, uh, I would say, mental health support, is boom time, okay? This is absolutely the moment. And you will see huge growth in those kinds of ministries, in the effectiveness and impact of them. And you know what? The biggest driver, the biggest way to heal someone with mental health issues because of social chaos and disintegration and being in prison because of COVID is hospitality. Invite them into your home. You see, there's a premium. I was at a conference just recently of a wonderful organization like YWAM, 30 years old this year. And we had hundreds of people. And I asked a question. I said, you're an incredible missionary movement. I have one question. I want you to put your hands up if in the last year, we've been out of COVID for a year now, okay? We can have people in our homes. Hallelujah. Right. Okay, so what's happened? This is report time, folks. In the last year, put up your hands if you've had maybe half the people into your house, your home, your flat, than you would normally have done in a year before COVID. And you know what? 70% put their hands up. I'm going to ask you the same question. Put up your hands if you know in actually the amount of hospitality you've done personally in the last year is significantly less than you would have done normally in a, poor, in a year before COVID. Put your hands up if that's true. There's no sense of shame in that. I'm just saying, folks, we have an opportunity to step up. Even if you're doing the same amount, double it. I cannot think of a better and more powerful time to invite people into your home. Why? Because we have this massive social deficit. So it is so special to be invited. Uh, we have nine grandchildren. We're desperate to go on seeing them. We're seeing them much more than normal. Why? Because we missed them. And Zoom, <coughs> welcome. <laughs> Number two, welcome. Okay, this second huge, huge trend. At, you're right in the middle of it. And President Putin is too. Okay, we have had six million people who moved rapidly into Ukraine, and from Ukraine to Poland. You, you know this. Many have already gone back. Someone is in our home group. She came for uh, three months. She's already gone back. Maybe she come back again. Why? Because she, it's, well, she wants to be in her own home. But there's a huge, huge, huge opportunity. We have people in this room who have pioneered YWAM models of mission through for migration. Okay, fantastic. And they have their own stories. We're going to hear a couple of them in a moment. But 1.9 million people have come without family, without culture, without tradition, without friendship, without relationship, often without a job. 1.9 million. An incredible opportunity. And as you will hear, of course, yes, you can do emergency stuff. You could have 100 people from the United States go to Poland and run a, a, um, you know, a, a feeding station. 
and then they go back. But actually what we're talking about is, is, is um, equipping the church so that the local church can be warm-hearted and these people can find their way to become part of the community. Okay. Now, this, I just want you to know the big picture about, uh, about migration. Okay. So most people in the world uh, are, don't live here. <laughs> they live in emerging markets. 85% live in the poorest nations outside Europe. And actually, almost all, well, most believers are in the poorest nations. There's hardly any believers in Europe, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry to say, compared to Uganda, uh, Nigeria, uh, Zimbabwe. And 1% of the world owns 50%, and most of them live in Europe. <laughs> Uh, so what we have is huge uh, differences. We have uh, an unreached Europe, which is incredibly wealthy, and we have a very Christian emerging markets, incredibly poor. And one group is on the move to another <laughs> with huge impact. 2.6 billion believers are alive today. Isn't that wonderful? They say they belong to Jesus. They're okay. There's one new church being planted in France every week at the moment. Isn't that wonderful? Quite a few of them are being planted by migrants <laughs> because they're coming in with faith, right? Um, there are 24,000, 24-7 prayer rooms in the world at the moment, but they're mostly in Europe. Put your hands if you knew that. <laughs> the largest prayer room in Europe is in Germany. It's been going for, I think, 20 years, every day, every night. And by the way, you might think that Europe is dominated by atheism. Atheism is a dying religion. Did you know that? Uh, the number of atheists in the world has gone down by 20 million in the last 30 years. At this rate, they will be extinct soon. <laughs> it's never been particularly fashionable to be an atheist globally. Um, in fact, it's very difficult to find them. You see, most atheists live in London, Bonn, Paris, and Madrid. <laughs> okay. Outside of these big cities, there are not very many atheists in the world. It's just you say, yeah, they're all around YWAM where we work. <laughs> okay, I'm just saying... We live in a global community of faith. Most of the world is very spiritual. Migrants, mostly coming in, are very spiritual people. They may not know Christ, but they are spiritual people. Um, uh, we're not seeing migrations of atheists. Okay. <laughs> really? Atheism is not an issue. Um, what we are seeing is aging of Europe. This is another massive growth area. And by the way, it's driving migration. Um, we'll talk about Angela Merkel in a moment, but Germany will be extinct unless it imports a lot of people very quickly. You see, you either have to make babies or you have to import them. <laughs> it's simple maths. And if you, if you have less than 2.4 children per couple in a nation, then the nation becomes extinct. It just dies out. So there is huge demographic pressure to look after elderly people, to encourage migration, huge political pressure to stop it, huge economic pressure to allow it. So what are you going to do? Well, the government pays the bills, so they need the economy. Um, so you can see what's going to happen. And many of the migrants coming in are highly educated. They're often the first to come. They have resources. It's the son, uh, their eldest son, first generation at university, who's become a doctor. And this person, who's come from Uganda, will be financing Uncle, uh, the uncle's children, the cousin's children, the nephews and nieces, possibly 20, 30, 40 in the family will be financed from this medical income. Payback time, because guess who paid for him? Everybody. So you need to understand what's happening here. Many countries in the world, 30% of their income is coming from people like this friend. Okay? Money crossing borders. So, again, you might think your, your view of a migrant is some... Typically, it could be 10, 15, or 20 people that have financed the first person in their family group to go to university and become a doctor. And that person will be expected to be a blessing and an encouragement financially to the others back home. Yeah. One, I can tell you this confidently. One billion more people will, cross, will migrate over the next 30 years. How do I know that? Because it's happened every year. <laughs> And it's driven by the things I've told you about. And that's loss of family, friends, traditions. So people are coming very shaken and very open. One billion people have no access to electricity. <laughs> I mean, 
2.3 billion are at risk of drought, and that's before climate change. 4.4 billion at risk by 2050. I'm saying migration will be a feature of the European Union, and it's even more powerful than Donald Trump. It's an irresistible force. No one can prevent it. No one can prevent this. It's politically embarrassing, but you cannot do it. They will find a way. By the way, the easiest way to migrate, do you know what it is? No one can stop this. You just book a holiday in Disneyland, in Paris, for a week. But you stay 25 years. <laughs> can they stop you? How can they stop that? It's just a tourist. I'm just saying, open your eyes, folks. The idea of you know, boats, people being stopped, will stop migration. It can't. People will move where they want. And they're coming to Europe in very large numbers. This is causing tragedies. So I hesitate to show you this photograph, but I want you to see it to make a point. This is one child out of 2,400 that was drowned on the beach of Lesbos. And we have people here, you're going to hear from them in a minute, uh, from Lesbos. Okay? Here's the point. 2,400 died, no one cared. One photograph of one child made headlines. As a result, within 48 hours, Chancellor Cole had signed a piece of paper admitting 800,000 more Syrian refugees into Germany. See, the future, my friends, is not about technology or information or robotics. It's about emotion. The future is about the power of a single photograph to change policy in a whole nation. And with this, as I say, thousands of new churches in Portugal and Spain are being planted by migrants coming from amazing churches in places like Brazil, Argentina, Peru, Colombia. Isn't that amazing? We've got missionaries in this room from Colombia. Okay, third, third big ministry trend, kindness. Now, you're doing all these things. This is the wonderful thing. I mean, I'm wanting to encourage you. You are already doing these things, but these are at the very heart of effective mission for the next five years. Kindness, what do I mean by that? We have a pandemic of kindness in Europe at the moment. You say, what? Yeah, we do. Actually, it's causing many of the headlines, which cause you some concern as Christians sometimes. Um, Me Too movement, Black Lives Matter. I, I, you know, I, I listed, uh, you know, I, 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 here's just a few. I listed these in about 30 seconds. Forgive me if I've left your own cause off the list. Just read them. Okay, and in there, of course, is issues of gender and, and, and very, very many issues. And here is the one big question that society has. And do you know what? This is a question that comes from the heart of God. You see, we are made in the image of God. <laughs> we are programmed to be loving. You say, no, 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 we're fallen creatures. Well, we're made in the image of God. I know there is sin in us, but we are made in the image. Will you say that again? I am made in the image of God. Right. Okay. And therefore, we should expect all kinds of things. That's why crime, that's why murder is so unusual. Did you know that? You know, um, I mean, put up your hands if you get worried about people stealing your laptop if you use it on a train, when you're using it. I mean, it's so easy to take your laptop. All you've got to do is produce a kitchen knife, and you say, thank you, and you walk off with a laptop. Does it happen? Not very often. Why is that? Because we're programmed, actually, as social creatures, to be loving and kind and considerate and careful citizens. That's a strange thing. We are, you know, you know, I can say, oh, come on, Patrick. All the people I know are evil. You have no idea how many people that are evil around where I am. Well, let me meet them. <laughs> Mothers and fathers are programmed to love their kids. Yes, I know there's abuse as well, but I'm just saying there's, a, I, I just want to understand what's happening here. There's that cry of the heart at the moment across Europe. And what is it? It is from people who don't believe in God, that they wanted to learn how to love. Does that make sense? So, um, the gender issue. So, so how, 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 how can we most, the, 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 this is the angst the society is in at the moment, and it's complicated. So someone who has changed their gender, or is in the process of changing their gender, wants to run, uh, wants to, let's say, compete in a swimming race um, in the category on the Olympics for women. Okay, but this person was originally born as a man and has X Y chromosomes. Okay, so 
So out of so society goes into the, the athletics and uh, the Olympic Committee are also caught by this desire to express love. So they say, well, of course, we want to be inclusive, encouraging. So this person run, uh, competes and wins. So that particular race, uh, there's, um, the person who won was, I think, six foot four inches high and a huge build. Yeah, okay. And much taller, in fact, than any of the women who ever competed in that race before. Then, of course, other <laughs> yeah, we also want to be loving to people who are, have double X chromosomes. You see, can you see what's happening here? Great concern. It's a great debate at how are we more, more loving? How can we be more loving? And you know what? At the end of the day, whatever the issues are, we are absolutely for being loving to all. Isn't that right? Showing the love of Christ to all. That was what HIV was all about for us. It was not to say, how did someone acquire HIV? Was it through this kind of relation? We just say that here are we expressing the unconditional love of Christ to every human being. Actually, that was the lesson of John 8, 1 to 11. John 8, 1 to 11, that the story of the woman caught to be stoned to death by angry men. The man was missing. Jesus writes in the dust, and then he calls up. He says, here's the stone for you who are perfect to cast. And not a single person could come to cast the stone. Why? Because Jesus was showing them that all of us have fallen. All of us are undeserving, but by God's grace, he loves us. By God's grace, he loves us. And he, he says to the woman, uh, go and leave your life. If you don't want God's love. Love. You know, how do we do that? Well, okay, little practical thing. Again, hospitality. Um, so I, I was a student at Cambridge University, and I used to leave my door unlocked. Uh, it was looked a bit like this. Because uh, I lived on an open corridor. I was in the center of town. So many people of my friends were living a mile out. I say, anytime you want, you don't need to ask me. Just drop around, have a cup of coffee, sit, do your homework, you know, plug in your computer, whatever you need to do, it's fine. Anyway, some, some friend of mine uh, decided to put my love to the test. So he thought, I know what I'm going to do. And he wandered down to the market, which is where all the people who had, were, had a dependency of alcohol tended to gather and were homeless. And he said, I've got, I've got a fantastic place for you to go. He <laughs> said, room 011, King's College, Cambridge, warm welcome. See, and I had no idea this was happening. <laughs> so... One day I sort of walked in and there's this homeless person on my sofa, asleep, you see. And I said, hello, thank you. And I gave him a cup of, so you know, a cup of coffee as one does and sent him on his way. Then three days later, there's another one. <laughs> one night I woke up at three in the morning, my door's still unlocked, and discovered that the door is opening. <laughs> there's another guy coming in through the door. <laughs> one day on my way to lectures, this friend said to me, hello, Patrick, how are you? I think, fine. And I'm looking, I'm <laughs> not sleeping very well at the moment. He said, oh, <laughs> funny that, he says. Have you had any extra visitors recently? He wasn't a Christian, but he was putting Christian hospitality to the test. Do you know why he became a Christian? Why did he become a Christian? He didn't become a Christian immediately. About four or five months later, he became a Christian. Not through any further words that I said. Why is that? Because he had seen the power of hospitality. I'm just saying little things can really have huge power here, folks. But, um, there's a, almost a collective national repentance in my country. The Anglican Church has just approved 110 million euros to be given to, in reparations for slavery. Why is that? Um, it's an expression of our national conscience. We are uneasy with ourselves. We think, how did we do this? Um, how was it appropriate? How was it that we tolerated in our churches without speaking out nationally about it? A situation where a guy can go into a lift at work and touch another woman's, a woman's bottom, and it's considered to be normal. That's 20 to 30 years ago. Now that person will be in prison, maybe. But we've tolerated it for 30 years. You think about uh, racial discrimination. How is, it right that, uh, how is it right that in many parts of the city of London, there's hardly a single uh, Afro-Caribbean descent man in any senior position? Women, yes, but not the men. Why? But we've tolerated this. We're waking up now. I'm just saying, this, this feeling of 
um, national and European unease with ourselves is a holy thing. You understand that? It is a God-given conscience that we have. And my goodness me, we can speak into this. Why? Through the things that we do. So with asset, for instance, this speaks powerfully to people. They may not love our God, but they love our values. Yes? It's really powerful. Um, hospitality, another way to accelerate social action. So here's Milan, youth evangelist, just like Linda, who I gave, gave up, we gave our church leadership to. Youth evangelist, quick, um, uh, um, from, had a drug, drug background in Slovakia, uh, becomes the leader of Slovakia across uh, for asset. He writes the national sex education syllabus. He soon wins a European Union contract to reach every young child in the whole of Slovakia with a syllabus that he himself has written as a Christian youth pastor. Hello? <laughs> Meanwhile, the person who has mentored him, someone called Tomáš in Czech Republic, has been seeing 60,000 young people a year and prays after every lesson. Amen. Meanwhile, in Ukraine, another work that was planted from uh, people like Milan and Tomas, uh, the youth evangelists have been um, into, they're seeing, I don't know, tens of thousands every year, and many of them now in faith based clubs, in churches, after school, coming out of that. Why? Because parents want it, they want the influence, young people want it. I'm just saying, huge opportunity. So, Milan, okay, he's right at the heart of it. He, now he's taken over. He's like the spiritual, prophetic, apostolic father figure of the whole movement. Hallelujah. Isn't that exciting? Does he have a job title? No. Does he have a letterhead? No. Does anybody know officially who he is? No. Is he the most influential person on earth in this movement? Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> because he's a servant. And he's a servant that people want to follow. So Milan, for the last, I'm ashamed to say, for the last year, he's been saying, Milan, we'd like to come spend some time with you. Can you come and minister to us? And I'm thinking, oh, so busy. Uh, the diary, it's not going to work. I don't know how to. So it didn't happen. So we just Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. And then <laughs> in the summer, the Lord convicted me. He said, this is crazy. You're trying to give yourself into situations or sit on boards where they don't want to listen. <laughs> Bashing your head against a brick wall. Meanwhile, you've got someone who is actually... Although he has no job title, he is really the apostolic father figure now of the whole movement. And you haven't found time for him. I said to Sheila, this is crazy. We need to get on a plane. And then I thought, no, 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 no. Actually, for the same funding, same money, we'll fly him over and give him a holiday. So he and his wife came over and they spent four days, five days nearly, in our house. Just to come, chill out, be in the presence of the Lord. No great pressure We'll have some meals together, but, you know, you can go for walks and just breathe. And that's what we did. Actually, I think it's probably the most effective thing we'll have done in 10 years. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? We're so busy. I missed it. But the impact on him has been amazing. In fact, uh, while I was on the way here on the train, he's busy, you know, the things that came out of that meeting, he's checking out. It's really exciting. But, you know, it also happened hospitality when we were there. So this is his family. And it's meant that we can support him. Why? Because we've met his family. We've, we've, we've hung out. Yeah. Um, and this is them in our, in our home. And I do not know any other way to accelerate so quickly the discipleship that we need. Does that make sense? To impart vision for people to catch something. It's not emails. May the Lord deliver us from trying to lead by email. <laughs> we need to hang out in the presence of the Lord. And it's often just to breathe. You know, we have so many agendas and meetings. I'm not talking about that. Hospitality is about no agenda. So we had the chairman of Asset in the UK and his wife for the weekend, last weekend. Just no agenda, nothing to talk with him about, just to bless them. Okay, right. Uh, so, kindness. Okay, so those three, support, welcome, kindness. We're already probably nearly 12 o'clock, aren't we? What's the time? 10.30, oh my goodness. It's officially coffee break. Can I beg 10 minutes? Because something very special is going to happen now. <laughs> See, there are so many heroes in this room. I could get 300 stories up on this platform. Uh, but I'm just going to call out a couple of people I met last night. Hannah and Juan, where are you? Yeah, yeah, hiding. Okay. Uh, ooh. 
Low battery? Okay, yeah. Uh, that's for the technicians. If they can sort out a power supply w during the coffee break, that would be great. Um, okay, and uh, Alfonso, where are you? Alfonso, yeah. Giving hospitality to a little baby. Okay, give him a round of applause, folks. <laughs> <laughs> So had, I was just minding my own business, doing what I do at the back, you know, changing all my slides last night. <laughs> and Hannah, Hannah came up during the breakout session, and, uh, um, and you started sharing what you were doing. So uh, I'll summarize a little bit. Hannah's from the U.S., uh, joined a discipleship training program in Mexico. Uh, she tells me that she wasn't actually fully a Christian, or hardly one. Somehow managed to, managed to get on the program by telling a whole load of things that weren't absolutely, totally true. <laughs> Life totally changed. Uh, isn't that exciting? <laughs> I say, we need a fuzzy edge to our ministry. You know, sometimes we can lock things out. Um, so Hannah then, um, uh, an emergency call because of the refugee crisis in Syria, uh, from Syria, Turkey, Lesbos, suddenly you're on a plane. Um, so Hannah... Uh, tell us what you were doing in Lesbos, very briefly. So we were working receiving refugees primarily from Syria, but also up to 40 nations that were traveling through Africa and the Middle East onto the boats in Turkey and would make a journey to Lesbos where we would receive them and give them housing, tents, blankets, clothing, things like that. Their immediate needs in the refugee camps. That was the first draw to the island and why we came. And, but it changed quickly. Yes, it did. Um, I, after about maybe, I don't know, what was it, one or two years? About two years, we started to see this shift, and I'm not an expert in crisis migration, but after about one or two years, the immediate needs are met. So you have your blankets, you have your food, you have your shabby housing, but you don't need more and more blankets. You actually need long-term sustainable ways that you can grow and in, integrate into a society. And so we began to see that change, and we pulled out of the refugee camps and started working on more long-term holistic um, discipleship and meeting the needs of the refugees that were coming into Europe. Okay, so this takes you from Lesbos up to Thessalonica, right? That sort of area. Um, yeah, and so what's, what's the shape of the ministry that's happening there now? So we're now in Thessaloniki, and we actually pulled our whole base and moved to Thessaloniki to join together with the team there as an effort of seeing how can we reach Greece as a nation. So not just focusing on the, the small need of the immigrants that are there, but how do we work with the whole nation? And dis we talk about discipling nations. How do we disciple the nation to meet the needs of the refugees? How do we disciple a generation of young Greeks, not focusing on the immigrants so much, but taking a step back that can long-term carry the vision and, and help and need that the refugees will need after whatever foreigners come and go? It will be the Greeks that will still be there. Thank you. And uh, Juan, you uh, Colombian, Colombian missionary, uh, sent by God to, uh, I think you went straight to Greece, didn't you, more or less? Yeah, yeah, first I went to France in 2011. Leading this work. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so um, did my DTS in Lyon, France, uh, and then joined Via until 2017. And that's when the base sent me with a small group of people um, to go and trying to coordinate for around 3,000 people, YWAMers, that came to respond to this need that um, the ref refugees were having in the camp. Yeah. Fantastic. And you're now married? Now we're married, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you. And uh, that must have been quite difficult to move. It's always easier to carry on. Remember we say, uh, you remember me saying earlier, we need to ask the Lord what it is we believe in most. Yeah, not what necessarily what we believe in has been brilliant, but what we believe is now is the most, bestest, because life's too short. Yeah. So they think that as soon as they realize this, they're on the move. That must have been tough to leave something that's been blessed by God, abandon it all, and start again. Yeah, definitely. It takes a uh, word of the Lord to do that, and that's what he gave us. Um, he spoke to us, um, to the leadership team, and he brought a word of unity, and he didn't just want us to think about unity, do conferences, and do things together, small here and there, but he actually literally wanted us to move from one place, the whole base, all together, uh, into Thessaloniki. And it was his invitation, it was his word um, that led us onto that 
um, and his vision, of course, after all, that's what we're pursuing, that's what we want to see, just the vision of God being done in this world, and that's what motivated us and helped us move a whole base into an, a new complete base, a new complete place, and then merging all both of the bases together wasn't an easy job. After one year and five months, we finally feel like we're doing something that is uh, profitable and that is um, easy for people to recognize, hey, this is, this is God working in you guys. So you've migrated, because it was a welcome ministry. You've migrated your ministry. It was a welcome ministry. That was one of the things that was on that list of three. It became a support ministry. And now it's become a, a movement of kindness. Yeah, and uh, it's, uh, it's changed from the uh, emergency feed camps to equipping, empowering, and releasing the local church to rise up and be that movement of kindness. Amen? Isn't that right? So again, you see the model of doing it, but then releasing it quickly and being agile in response to the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's really good. Alfonso, uh, fantastic. Will you give them a round of applause? Thank you. Okay. Before you go, before you go, put up your hands if you have been involved yourself in refugee ministry in any way, shape, or form, a migrant ministry. Oh, my word. Put up your hands if you've had a chance already to have a conversation with these two people. <laughs> about a third. Right. Uh, we were talking earlier about this. Why do we gather? We gather because, yes, it's good to be in the presence of the Lord, and the Lord says himself, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I. Uh, yes, to have a good time, because it's amazing to worship. But we gather because, actually, uh, we do kingdom business together. Um, and I think, actually, you know what? It's the fastest way to accelerate our effectiveness, isn't it? And to refine and discover what the next thing is, or how we can... Um, not just carry on doing exactly the same. So um, who here has had any involvement in Ukraine or with Ukrainian challenges? I would say these two, you know, um, I mean, here is a team that's been doing it already in YWAM's name. They know where your Ukrainian ministry will land up. If you want to know the future, go and talk to them. They know what it has to look like and how it needs to be re-engineered through these different phases from welcome through to support, through to a movement an indigenous movement. These are people to talk to. I'm just saying, I believe that there are all kinds of things that are ha going to happen in the next two or three days. Uh, that I, and I'm asking each of you to pray. Say, Lord, guide me to the right people that I can connect with. You need to invite these two. We did this with ASEC quite a lot. So, uh, so from Africa, we're just, they're, they're not organized from central office. We're completely decentralized. Every asset is its own movement. But, uh, you know, the, uh, the Ugandans want to go to India to see the clinic there because they don't have a clinic. Um, uh, other people traveling to Ukraine to see what they've been doing amongst uh, the youth in schools. So this is the hallmark of a movement, isn't it? It's when we literally move. And we, we move to learn, we call people in, uh, and we say, we just need a bit of your expertise. Uh, and it's all about hospitality. Great, fantastic, well done. And Alfonso, you've been doing an amazing thing amongst refugees, uh, not refugees, mig not migrants, pilgrims, people who choose to move on their way to, in the steps of the body of St. James. Yeah, we are in Galicia, in Spain, reaching out the seekers of the pilgrims. You know, Camino Santiago, who has done the Camino Santiago once? Who has walked? Mama, Papa, Grandfather, no? Okay, we invite you to walk the Camino. Come on, guys, move, movement, right? Get out. Uh, there's several Caminos, the Camino Santiago, several areas you can walk from, you know, 500 miles, 500, 700 kilometers to 100 kilometers. But we're inviting teams to come. So Debbie is there, my wife. She is the heart of the home, the home we call Hope House. We established in near Santiago de Compostela. And um, yeah, we just are there inviting the pilgrims to experience a home. We felt the Lord's calling us to to, to rescue the hospitality uh, tradition of the Camino de Santiago that we used to be, instead to be an albergue, a pension uh, uh, that you pay for, you're invited to come to be at home with us. 
come, have dinner. We prepared a very nice dinner, very good wine, <laughs> good food. Uh, and uh, we check out, you know, the dietary aspect as well, you know, of the pilgrims. You know, that lab is very careful on that. And have a bed ready. It's not bug beds. Nice bed with cards, chocolate, or something there. Welcome them. Show them we're expecting them. You are welcome here. And uh, um, we felt as well that uh, as Protestants, evangelicals, we have not understood the, the signpost of God in Europe that the Camino de Santiago represents. When Europe, in their in the secular way, is trying to move all the signs of Christianity away, the pilgrim have persevered, you know, for most of a thousand years. And it's still today a signpost, a lighthouse, where thousands and thousands from all over the world are coming. It's amazing, you know? Amazing. Last year, 500,000 pilgrims registered themselves at the office in Santiago de Compostela to get their certificate. 500,000. So we need walkers. <laughs> we need Jesus, Jesus' body. And, and the amazing thing is, along. it's every age, isn't every it? Every age. And many, many of them would not even call themselves Christian, but they are coming for a spiritual experience. What an amazing opportunity. And seekers. They are seeking. They are seeking. They are asking questions. And uh, in your home? In our home, in two chapels. We have been given by the Catholic Church two chapels where we meet the pilgrims as well on those chapels. And uh, the last thing is that uh, all this has spread out in the movement because all the missions have seen the thing, we have blown the trumpet, OM established in their place, and well, all the missions. So we have about a network of about 15 ministries all over the communities now. Fantastic. And a round of applause for Alfonso and his wife. <laughs> Wonderful. And you know what? Um, uh, there are so many other stories that could be told. So Hannah and Juan, for instance, there's now a youth ministry happening in partnership with OM in, in the community they are. Uh, it's just wherever we're doing things, it's just amazing how, how, how by the Holy Spirit, all kinds of uh, things start to happen. Yeah. Hospitality is the love language of God. Yeah. You don't need a home to be hospitable. It's your heart. Amen. On that note, enjoy hospitality outside. If you could come back in, try to come back as quickly as you can, maybe 15, 20 minutes maximum, because we have three more pieces and we want to have a time of, of ministry and worship together and to hear some more stories as well. Okay, friends, shall we just wrap up our conversation? Because it's kind of going away. Okay. I think the coffee is activating all, uh, all of us. <laughs> Thank you again for coming in. It, it, it was lovely outside with the sun, and I saw you all enjoying just um, connecting with each other, so that was awesome. Um, but we'd love to continue our topic, and Patrick, um, of course, he has a lot more he would like to share with us, and I think uh, we would like to hear more. Uh, we will actually make a small uh, a change to uh, the way we communicate, uh, that we will actually have translation from the stage, because it was virtually impossible for the translator to, to keep up simultaneous. And, and we love Patrick for his, his really like passionate communication. And he's very adjustable, so he will also manage with the translator right here. So this is Karen. She is actually British from origin, but lives in Spain already for many, many decades. So a clap for Karen. Why don't you come up here, Karen? And um, let's move on to uh, this next session. And we tried to break just a little bit before one o'clock for lunch. So Patrick, I'll keep an eye on you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, folks, uh, thank you for those who came up and shared your own stories. And we're going to be here hearing some more stories. Muchas so, gracias por los que habéis acercado para compartir vuestras historias y vamos a escuchar más también. Great. So, COVID has also made us very uh, careful about our planet. 
COVID también nos ha hecho tener mucho cuidado acerca de nuestro planeta. Um, COVID has made us think about lots of things in new ways. Nos ha hecho pensar en muchas cosas de muchas maneras nuevas. Um, and uh, that's a good thing. Y es bueno. Um, and if we do, if you look at a recent survey, si miramos una encuesta reciente, uh, you'll see that uh, uh, 56%, around 6 out of 10 young people, 16 to 25 year olds, saying really serious things. Hay casi 6 de cada 10 jóvenes dicen cosas muy serias. So this is a very important way to have conversations about God. Y eso es una buena manera de tener conversaciones acerca de Dios. And, uh, you know, we have within YWAM a great expertise on this. Y dentro de JKUM es lo que tenemos como eh, habilidad. I'm going to just uh, tell you one thing that perhaps you don't know. Voy a contaros algo que quizás no sepáis. It's the story of methane. Story. Methane. It's, uh, it's, uh, ah, yeah. it's metano. Uh, sí, la historia de metano. Yes, thank you. Um, it's, uh, there are places in Russia now which are getting warmer. Hay lugares en Rusia donde se están poniendo más caliente. Uh, so much so that you can stamp your foot. Y puedes golpear así. A, a light with a cigarette lighter. Y con una, un encendedor. A, and it will start to burn. Empieza a quemar. And it will not go out. Y no se va a apagar. Uh, in fact, uh, there is... Uh, Often explosions. Muchas veces hay explosiones de metano. This is a crater which is 50 meters deep. Aquí hay un agujero que tiene una profundidad de 50 metros. So you say, well, I've not heard about this before. Entonces quizás no, no te suena. But the fact is, there is more carbon in frozen methane than in all the global reserves of coal, oil, or gas. Pero de hecho hay más carbón en el metano helado que en todas las reservas de eh, aceite, gas y coal. And it's all frozen. Y todo está helado. So tell me, what happens when Siberia goes to 30 degrees centigrade? Entonces, ¿qué va a pasar cuando Siberia sube la temperatura a 30 grados? And parts of Siberia did in the last two years. En los últimos dos años hay partes de Siberia donde eso ha ocurrido. What happens with these fires as they go underground? ¿Qué pasa con estos fuegos cuando pasan en el subterráneo? And then the winter comes and you get covered with maybe half a meter of snow. Y luego llega el invierno y lo cubre medio metro de, de nieve. But it's not enough to stop the fire. Pero no es suficiente para apagar el fuego. It's just a very, very slow burning. Se está quemando lentamente. We, we call these... Um, Um, sleeping fires. Entonces son como fuegos durmientes. And there are hundreds of sleeping fires in Russia at the moment. Hay cientos de fuegos durmientes en Rusia ahora mismo. You may say, does it matter? Say, um, does eso, it matter? Es, ¿Eso importa? Yes, it might. Pues sí, posiblemente importa. Um, in fact, uh, if we were to see uh, a, a, sig a significant rise in the temperature in Siberia, si la temperatura en Siberia sube de forma incremental, a, a, va a haber algo que va a ir de mal en peor. Especially as methane is, I think it's a thousand times or more uh, powerful as a, uh, as a gas for trapping the warmth of the sun. Y el metano es como mil veces más eficaz en atrapar el calor del sol. The good news is it doesn't stay in the atmosphere For very long compared to carbon dioxide. No se queda mucho tiempo en el ambiente en comparación still, con dióxido de carbono. Pero lo digo porque hay muchas cosas que están ocurriendo ahora mismo. So here is another. Aquí hay otro. Um, as a doctor, I can tell you this. Como médico os puedo decir esto. Podíamos calentar el ambiente aquí dentro a 35 grados. Y metemos mucho vapor de manera que sube la humedad a 100%. Then you will be dead in six hours. En seis horas morirías. Every one of you will be dead. Todos. So the question is, is this happening? In nature. La pregunta es, ¿esto está ocurriendo en la naturaleza? And the answer is very close. Y la respuesta es, pues casi. So in Delhi in the last three years, 
En Delhi, en los últimos tres años, we have seen parts of that city get close to 35 degrees centigrade. Hemos visto que hay lugares en esa ciudad donde se acerca los 35 grados centígrados. At, at 100% humidity. Con una humedad de 100%. For maybe half an hour. An quizás hour. durante media hora, una hora. So here's the question. La pregunta es. How long will it be? ¿Cuánto before, tiempo tardará? Before maybe one city in the world lands up with an event. 100% humidity for six hours. Antes de que quizás una ciudad en el mundo va a tener 100% humedad, 35 grados durante seis horas. And you can be sure that all the wealthy people will live. Y seguramente los que tienen riqueza van a vivir. Because they will have air conditioning. Porque tendrán aire acondicionado. But you, you do not have to be a prophet. Pero no tienes que ser profeta. To predict. Para predecir. That it is quite likely that in some city, at some point in the next 15 or 20 years, this will happen. Que en alguna ciudad, en algún lugar del mundo, en los próximos 15, 20 años, eso va a ocurrir. And you could see maybe half a million, a million people dead within a six-hour period. Y quizás medio millón o un millón de personas podrían morir en seis horas. I've said to you the future is not about events. It's about one word which drives the future. More than politics, more than innovation, more than technology, it's emotion. Entonces he dicho que lo que conduce al futuro no es una, un acontecimiento, no es política, no es economía, es una sola palabra. So what's the word? Emotion. Emoción. Passion. La emoción, la pasión. And also that small things can trigger huge emotion. Y que hay cosas muy pequeñas que pueden... Eh, estimular una emoción, una reacción muy grande. You will never that of the child I you. Nunca vais a olvidar esa foto del niño en Lesbos. You, you like this, y os prometo, si ocurre un evento como este, you nunca lo vas a olvidar. I will never forget what the date is, you know, the 14th Yo, of July, 2038 or something. You will never forget that date. Nunca me olvido la fecha en, en que ocurrió eso. It would be like 9-11 is... And never forgotten as a date. Es como el 11 de septiembre, nunca hemos olvidado esa fecha. How many did that kill? ¿Cuántas personas murieron? 3,000, 4,000, quizás. Here maybe half a more. Y aquí estamos hablando de medio so millón o más. I'm saying pay, pay attention. Así que hay que prestar atención. Uh, I predict that you will see some events take place. Yo predigo que sí que va a haber algunos acontecimientos que van a producir un cambio dramático en cómo afrontamos el cambio climático. Pero la verdad es que tenemos la tecnología para hacer cosas asombrosas. I wrote a book on this called Sustain Agility. Y leí un libro sobre esto que, que se llama Agilidad Sostenida. And uh, the message was that we have all the technology we need. <laughs> El mensaje era que tenemos toda la tecnología que necesitamos. Already. Ya lo tenemos. All we need to do is go to scale. Pero necesitamos And usarlo. Give, give just one example. Os voy a dar un ejemplo. We have the power already, technically, to, uh, to, to provide all the electricity for the European Union from the Saudi desert. Técnicamente tenemos la capacidad de proveer toda la electricidad necesaria en, en Europa desde el desierto de Saudi Arabia. But at the end of the day, Arabia Saudita. You can have big conferences and seminars and workshops. Pero al final del día podemos tener muchas conferencias, seminarios, talleres. And as you have heard, uh, as you will hear soon, uh, we are already involved as a movement here in COP26 and things like that. Y como os vais a escuchar, estamos involucrados en COP36 y otras cosas. But I just say here is another conversation we can have Pero as a movement. Es otra conversación que podríamos tener como it, movimiento. It happens in our homes. Ocurre en nuestras casas. With people we hope will find faith in Christ. Con personas que esperamos van a encontrar fe en Jesucristo. About an issue which they worry about acerca de lo que les preocupa a And ellos. Say, this, uh, this is how God feels about it. Y podríamos decir, esto es lo que siente Dios acerca de este okay. tema. Next big one is virtual. Siguiente cosa es virtual. Now, some of you have already heard me speak about this. 
Algunos de vosotros ya me habéis escuchado hablar de esto. Y quiero animaros de noticias de, de este país. Cuando empezó COVID y estuvimos todos encerrados, It's true, we became more anxious. es verdad que nos convertimos en personas más ansiosas, But it was an incredibly powerful thing. pero fue algo muy poderoso. Y yo often think about the ministry of the Apostle Paul. Y a menudo pienso en el ministerio del apóstol Pablo. Uh, who was locked up. Estaba encerrado. God did not answer his prayers. Dios no le con contestó sus oraciones. He never got out. No salió de la cárcel. Um, and, and it was after a very long time, y fue después de mucho tiempo. Crying out to God, clamando a Dios. Uh, why are you not answering my prayers? ¿Por qué no estás contestando mis oraciones? Uh, that Paul realized something. Y Pablo se dio cuenta de algo. See, Paul thought his main ministry, in fact, he thought his only ministry was being present. Pablo pensó que su único ministerio era estar presente. It's to lay hands on you. Imponer manos sobre una persona. To be in the worship meeting. Estar en la reunión de adoración. To be planting churches. Estar plantando iglesias. To be training leaders. Formando líderes. He could not understand the thought that you could have any impact. Uh, in, in another place. Y no podía entender ese pensamiento de que podrías tener un impacto en otro lugar. Pero en realidad fue cuando él empezó a escribir que nació su verdadero ministerio. So through his writings, Paul has become the most influential Christian who has ever lived. A través de lo que él escribió, se ha convertido en, en el cristiano más influyente de todos los tiempos. He was the first time warp apostle. He was the time traveler. Era como un viajante en el tiempo. Today we have used his words. Hoy hemos usado sus palabras. There is no church in the world which would not use his words. No hay ninguna iglesia en todo el mundo que no usaría las enseñanzas de Pablo. Pero solo ocurrió por el equivalente a COVID para él. So I thank God for COVID. Así que yo doy gracias a Dios por el COVID. Now I want to take you on a journey. Ahora quiero llevaros en un, show you what una excursión. Happens. Show you what happens. Os voy a mostrar qué pasa when two billion people are locked up. <laughs> cuando se encierran dos billones de personas. Okay. Um, these are just UK figures. Estos son cifras solamente para el you Reino Unido. Vosotros tenéis vuestras propias But historias. I this. I'm a, I really believe in research. Yo creo mucho en la investigación. Data really matters in your mission. Los datos importan mucho en el ministerio. We absolutely have to know what it is that we're doing. Tenemos que saber lo que estamos haciendo. So we can focus on what's next. Yeah? Para enfocarnos en, en lo que viene después. So, el 29% de los adultos en el Reino Unido miraron cultos online durante los primeros meses de COVID. The UK is a post -Christian country. El Reino Unido es un país post-cristiano. We have many atheists. Tenemos muchos ateos, Much opposition to Christian values. mucha oposición a los valores del cristianismo, But half of the entire population of London went to church. pero la mitad de la población en Londres asistió Hello? a una iglesia. Are you hearing this? ¿Estáis escuchando eso? Ok. Um, the young people are the most difficult to reach in the UK. En el Reino Unido es, lo más difícil es alcanzar a los jóvenes. Pero half of the UK's 18 to 34 year olds went to church. Sin embargo, la mitad de los jóvenes entre 18 not, y 34 años asistieron a un culto online. Not just once, no solamente times. una vez, sino varias veces. Not during lockdown. No solamente durante el confinamiento. We had three months of severe lockdown. Tuvimos tres meses de confinamiento muy estricto. Y luego el gobierno dijo, bueno, podéis salir, tener fiestas, ver los amigos. Go to the restaurant. Ir al restaurante. Uh, do what you want. Haz lo que quieras. So they went to church. Y fueron a la iglesia. During July and August, en julio y agosto, we asked young people what they did. preguntamos a los jóvenes qué habéis hecho. And half, half of all the young people in my country went to church. Y la mitad de todos los jóvenes en mi país fueron Several a la iglesia. Times. Varias Several veces. Times. Varias veces. Not in lockdown. <laughs> y no en el confinamiento. What? ¿Qué pasa? 
These results were so shocking. Estos resultados Because son chocantes. We don't believe this. No lo creemos. Do it again. Hazlo otra vez. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm giving you results of maybe um, six, seven, or eight huge surveys. Os estoy dando los resultados de quizás seis, siete, ocho encuestas. I think maybe a hundred thousand pounds, hundred thousand euros we, has been spent. Se gastaron cien mil euros en estas encuestas. By people scratching their head. Y la gente diciendo. Because we can't believe the data. No podemos creer lo que nos está enseñando estas encuestas. And it's even bigger than we thought. Y es aún más grande de lo que pensamos. Um, we know now that 2.5 million people in the UK attended church for the first time during the first month of lockdown. Y ahora sabemos que 2.5 millones de adultos asistieron a la iglesia por primera vez durante el primer mes del confinamiento. I tell you, Dick, if this had been physical people, si esto hubiera sido personas físicas going into physical churches, yendo a iglesias físicas y si te hubiera dicho tuvimos 2,5 millones de visitas en la iglesia que han venido por primera vez pero en el mes de junio de 2023 2,5 millones de nuevas personas fueron a la iglesia en el mes de enero 2023, 2,5 millones han venido a la iglesia. You'll be saying there is revival. Yeah. Dirías, es un avivamiento. Yeah. Sí. I'm telling you, 2.5 million people went to church. And you say, nah. 2,5 millones de personas fueron a la iglesia. Yeah, just you Solamente en el Reino you Unido. Say, no, we don't believe in... Christians who wear pajamas to go to church. No, no creemos que es bueno que los cristianos están en pijama yendo a la iglesia. We think the only form of discipleship is to turn up, walk, bike, or car. Pensamos que la única manera de ser discípulo es, es ir andando en coche, en bicicleta. And anyway, the statistics are wrong. Y bueno, la, esas estadísticas tienen que estar mal. Okay, so we ask some more questions. Hicimos otras preguntas. Uh, we did another survey. Hicimos otra encuesta. We, we asked people in the street. Personas en la calle. Uh, do you have a faith? Yes or no? ¿Tienes fe en algo? Sí o no? If they said yes, we asked some more questions. Y si contestaron que sí, hicimos más preguntas. Said, how? How? Did ¿Cómo? You find faith in Christ? ¿Cómo has llegado a tener fe en Cristo? We asked everyone from the 80-year-olds who found faith in 1940. Y preguntamos a los que tienen 80 años que a lo mejor encontraron la fe en 1940. En gente de 15 años que hace seis semanas han encontrado la fe. And when you look at everyone, y cuando miramos a todo el mundo, it's six out of ten say that it's because of online. Seis sobre diez dicen es a causa de lo que hay online. Not, not only online. No solamente online. But it was a beginning for me. Pero ¿qué es aquí para mí? Hey, that's 6% of the 84-year-olds. Esos son 6% de los que tienen 84 años. Think about this. You can't get a number like that. No puedes conseguir un número así, una cifra así. It's difficult. Es difícil. Because it includes all the people who became Christians before the internet. Porque incluye a personas mayores que se convirtieron antes del internet. It includes all the people up until 2019 who have never had the opportunity to see a video stream. Y incluye personas que antes de 2019 nunca habían visto una pantalla de video. So how can you get 6%? Entonces, ¿cómo podemos conseguir ese 6%? What it tells you is, one, many people have found faith in Christ recently. Significa que muchas personas han encontrado fe en Cristo recientemente. Two. Y dos. Online was a major part of their spiritual journey. Y una buena parte de su viaje espiritu espiritual fue online. Say, well, of course, look at this. Claro, mira esto. Okay, maybe this figure is correct. Quizás esta cifra sea correcta. It's possible. Es posible. Okay, it's in, uh, okay, I'll tell you a personal story. Una historia personal. In our own church. En nuestra iglesia. Um, okay, so... Uh, we, we didn't know what to do during lockdown. No sabíamos qué hacer durante el confinamiento. Uh, we recorded things in our homes. Grabamos cosas en nuestras casas. For 18 months. Durante 18 meses. When we were fully uh, open again. 
Cuando ya pudimos salir y todo estaba abierto, for, for we to stream, por primera vez empezamos a hacer los, los with, cultos with, en streaming with one camera. con una cámara. Uh, when we were locked up, Cuando estábamos en el confinamiento, Uh, we, we had a church before of maybe 120, 110 adults, maybe 20 children. Teníamos una iglesia con 120 adultos y 10 niños. But in our first services online, en los primeros cultos online, we were getting 450 views. Teníamos 450 What? personas. And each view is more than one person. Y quizás estas, estas son aparatos, o sea, son más de 450 the personas. The other research shows that for each IP address, Por cada one, dirección one IP es uno, como uno y medio personas. So we were reaching in that service alone a total of maybe 600 people. Significa 600. que estamos alcanzando 600 personas. Okay, and it's not the same people each week. Y no son siempre las mismas personas. So we were probably reaching a community of maybe 1,000, 1,500 people. Podríamos decir que estamos alcanzando una comunidad de mil personas, 1,500 personas. And it's continued. Y eso ha seguido. So now we, uh, now when we opened up, cuando ya abrimos las puertas de la iglesia, visitors started to come every week. Ya teníamos visitas todas las semanas. I'm so bad at names. No, I have to write no soy. Them down here. Muy bueno en recordar nombres, siempre tengo que apuntar los nombres. When I got to 60 new people, y cuando ya tenía 60 personas I nuevas, leader, fui said, a los líderes. A 60 new people say that this is their spiritual home. Hay 60 personas nuevas que dicen que este es su hogar espiritual. But we weren't seeing it on a Sunday. Pero no lo veíamos los domingos. Because people were coming less regularly than before. Las personas no venían con tanta frecuencia maybe, como maybe antes. Maybe two Sundays a month. Quizás dos domingos Maybe al mes, tres domingos al mes. But my phone showed the truth. <laughs> Pero mi teléfono estaba mostrando la verdad. I'm now at, 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 up at over 100 adults here. Y ahora tengo 100 adultos nuevos. Uh, uh, nearly 30 young people. Casi 30 jóvenes. Who've joined the church, so we have doubled in size. Que se han hecho miembros de la iglesia. Here's Hemos duplicado en tamaño. Thing. There are still 800 people watching every 800 views a month. Y todavía hay 800 aparatos conectados What? al mes. I'm just saying this digital channel is really really important. O sea, esta vía digital es muy muy importante. I don't care what your ministry is. No me importa sea cual sea tu ministerio. But there is a digital dimension for it. Hay una dimensión digital. And I ask you to seek God what it is. Así que busca a Dios para Even ver qué es. Even if it's just es. to improve your website. I've been on some YWAM websites. Incluso si es solamente mejorar el sitio web. Yo he visitado algunos sitios web de YWAM. Why are you laughing at me? ¿Por qué os re reís? <laughs> what? I have been on, all I said was I have been on some YWAM websites. Yo he visitado algunos sitios web de Jotacum. And you're falling about laughing. Y os, os some of you are wetting yourselves because you are laughing so much. <laughs> Don't translate that. No. <laughs> Eso no se traduce. <laughs> okay. I believe the websites that <laughs> the websites are really, really important. Una página web es muy importante. I believe that many of them at the moment, like ours was, y ahora mismo, igual que la nuestra lo fue, they are built to encourage people to join discipleship programs. Lo hemos hecho para animar a las personas a juntarse a un programa de eh, discipulado. But actually, there's a whole other dimension. Pero hay otra dimensión. Uh, when we first started streaming, almost all the traffic, we, we created streaming as an emergency for the church. Nosotros creamos lo del streaming yeah. como una emergencia para la iglesia. We never thought anyone would actually turn up. No pensamos not, que mucha gente iba a asistir of the community. como parte de la comunidad. But Google found us. Pero Google YouTube nos encontró. Us. YouTube nos usa. So I'm just saying, be encouraged. Hay que estar animados con eso. Let's, let's use this. I, I believe there are some people here. Creo que hay algunas personas aquí. And your full-time role in future Will be a digital missionary. En el futuro, tu papel va a ser a Only tiempo completo como misionero digital. Creating digital missional communities. Creando comunidades de misión And the amazing digitales. thing is, it goes into every nation, every tribe. Eso puede llegar a cada nación y cada, cada Countries tribu. you can never visit. 
países donde so nunca puedes say, entrar. Really, Así really que matters. tenemos que estar animados con esto. Convertirlo de digital a presencial, okay. hay so, que usar la hospitalidad. So Sheila and I, uh, so here are two things. So every Sunday I'm video streaming if I'm in the church. I'm, I'm, I'm on the camera. You find me at the back. That's my, that's my ministry in the church. Cada domingo, I'm not si here. puedo, I'm yo there. estoy con la cámara Hello. filmando, grabando. That's what I do. Es lo que yo hago, yeah. lo que están haciendo ellos. And uh, in three weeks' time, Sheila and I are inviting 140 people in the ch in, 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 uh, uh, to the church. <laughs> Dentro de tres semanas, mi mujer y yo vamos a invitar 140 personas a asistir a la iglesia. Así que vamos a intentar que algunas de estas visitas virtuales pueden venir presencialmente. Esto ahora es en la, la vista de nuestra ventana. And this is so exciting. <laughs> es muy emocionante. <laughs> So we said we have a party on the beach. Podemos tener una fiesta en la and, playa. And we told all the our neighbors a very strange thing is going to happen outside our house. Y contamos a todos nuestros vecinos algo muy extraño va a ocurrir justo delante de nuestra nuestra Come casa. To the party. Ven a la fiesta. And at the first they were standing by their front doors like this. Al principio delante de sus puertas así. Looking out of their windows. Mirando por las ventanas. Then they came down through the front door. Pero luego se acercaron, se iban acercando the edge más. Of the a la playa. And then they started eating. Empezaron a comer. And then sat down. Se sentaron. And, uh, someone said, oh, you used to teach my children at school. Y alguien dijo, ah, tú oh, enseñabas hello. mis hijos en el cole. You used to be my taxi driver. Ah, tú and eres el, el que conducía el taxi. De and, repente uh, hay comunidad. And then next thing happens. Uh, y después. This woman on the right. Una señora. She's one of our neighbors. Una de nuestros vecinos. And she's rushed into her house. Entra a su casa to get ice cream for the children. para sacar helado para todos los niños. She is not part of the church, no es parte de, de la iglesia. But she now says that St. John's is my church. Pero ahora dice um, la iglesia de St. John es mi iglesia. Baptisms on the beach, she's there feeding people. Y cuando tenemos bautismos en la playa, ella viene so, para dar de comer a la gente. Unsaved neighbor offering hospitality. <coughs> To Christians on the beach. Nuestra vecina que no conoce a Dios <laughs> está sirviendo comida a los cristianos en la playa. And we have prayed for her. Y hemos orado por ella. And, and her husband. And, y su and marido. Have been to church. Han venido a la and iglesia. She plays worship songs constantly, a ella lot. siempre está poniendo música cristiana en She's su casa. Faith in Christ. Está encontrando fe okay, en Cristo. Finally, youth, children. Por último, jóvenes y niños. This is so huge and I'm so excited by this area. Esto es tan grande, me emociona tanto esto. Quizás ya estáis en este yeah. ministerio, levanta las no, manos. It's, it's what they're doing in Lesbos. The Lesbos ministry moved, now it's gone to Thessalonica. Now they have they've got a new youth center which they've bought with Youth for Christ. This is part of with and together by the way. With and together isn't just YWAM. Es lo que ha pasado con la gente de Lesbos que se fueron a Tesalónica y ahora tienen ministerio con jóvenes y niños. With and together is about collaboration, cooperation. Entonces el lema with con es colaboración, conexión. A core value is to be interdenominational, correct? Uno de nuestros valores es ser interdenominacional. Well, interorganizational. También podría ser interorganizacional. So here's another piece of really good news, but it's happening all over Europe. Okay? Esto está pasando por todas partes okay. en in, Europa. In this country here, one third of all schools are faith schools. En este país, un tercio de todas las this escuelas is an están country. basados en la fe. Es un país ateo. But what happens is parents want Christians. Pero lo que pasa es que los padres quieren cristianos. So one, 15 million adults in my country have been to a church school. 15 mi millones de adultos han ido a una iglesia, una escuela anglicana. 6% of all Christians say they became Christian through the church school. 6% dicen que se convirtieron en, es, en esos different, colegios. It's different in my country. But yes, but put up your hands if you're running school clubs es, out of school or in the summer holidays. Estáis like organizando that. algún tipo de you actividad para okay. niños fuera de, del cole o los institutos? This is the really exciting thing. Okay. Esto es lo que emociona realmente. Um, it's a really, really hard time to be a parent. Okay? Es un tiempo muy difícil para ser padres ahora mismo. One of the mismo. hardest things for being a parent is this. 
Una de las cosas más yeah. complicadas es el móvil. This is a terrifying object if you are the parent of Nos a 10-year-old. aterroriza Correct? si tenemos un niño de 10 años. Not just because you are Waiwama. No solo porque eres Jotokumero. You can be a Hindu, Muslim, Podría atheist. ser hindú, musulmán, It's ateo. Exactly the same. Es lo mismo. No parent knows what to do. It's Ningún difficult. padre sabe qué hacer. And I'll tell you that people are looking for positive role models. Y las personas están buscando a personas que para ser modelos para sus hijos. And this is why the asset ministry, Por uh, eso el ministerio started, de Asset que empezamos con esto has grown so dramatically in high schools. <laughs> ha crecido de forma dramática en los institutos. These are Christian educators going into schools. Son educadores cristianos que entran en los institutos. Uh, doing things like sex education para hablar de educación sexual, tobacco, alcohol, alcohol drugs, tabaco, everything. todo eso. Hay que ser confianza en ser quien eres to make your own decisions, para tomar las, tus propias decisiones, not to feel pressure, no sentirse bajo presión. How you like, uh, and online, cómo puedes tratar temas como el sexting o el bullying online and all the other really hard that are using y todas las cosas tan duras que están pasando a través de, de los móviles. So, This is a huge, huge opportunity for YWAM as a movement. Es una oportunidad enorme para Jotokum como movimiento. And in partnership and collaboration, we don't need to create these programs, they exist. No tenemos que crear estos programas, ya existen. Yeah, it doesn't matter whether you partner with Esteem or it could be many other organizations. But we do not need to build these programs. No importa si tú tienes que colaborar con otra organización, no tenemos que crear estos programas. But it has to be professional. Tiene que ser algo profesional, eso sí. School, uh, it, it a <laughs> Para entrar en un instituto necesitas um, una certificación. To be part of a national program. Parte de un programa nacional. Approved by the Ministry of Education in Germany. Aprobado por el Ministerio de Educación, por ejemplo. Uh, using a syllabus that maybe you have helped to build. Usando un currículo que a lo mejor tú has ayudado a, a crear so ese currículo. You say we are part of a national program. Puedes decir, somos parte de un programa nacional. Somos una organización de voluntarios, no compramos nada. Say, well, y dice, bueno, ¿de dónde viene so vuestro dinero? Pero bueno, de iglesias. And we're here to serve you, Estamos aquí para serviros, to you, para apoyaros, to bless you, bendeciros and to, uh, and to do, uh, help you in the school. Y ayudaros en and el colegio. Of, we talk about in Hablamos mucho de liderazgo de servicio en Jotacum. Y esto es clave en los colegios. Si entramos y decimos nuestra agenda es ganar a gente para Cristo, so fine, club at school, uh, pues dicen, church. bueno, pues hazlo en la iglesia. But when we say our agenda is very simple, Pero si decimos es muy sencillo lo que queremos hacer, es escuchar, escuchar vuestros desafíos. To come alongside you to see if we can find a solution together. Estar a vuestro lado para ver si podemos juntos encontrar soluciones. Then you find every door opens wide. Entonces todas las puertas están abiertas. Are the parents. Y la puerta más grande son los padres. So hospitality, the, uh, anyone can start. You know this. We have. Uh, okay. Uh, Hospitality is key to this. We're mixing the hospitality in with church and worship. So, Hospitalidad es muy importante, es clave mezclarlo junto con la iglesia so we, y la alabanza. We don't have enough people in the church to run a, a, a children's group for each age. No hay suficiente gente para tener un club de niños para todas las edades. Don't bother. Pues no lo hagas. Just feed them. Simplemente les das comida. Provide food. Breakfast. Comida, desayuno. We think of food banks and hungry families. Pensamos en bancos de alimentos, familias con necesidades. So a church close to us, they started a, 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 what they call messy church. It's very messy. Una iglesia cerca de nosotros en, yeah, crazy. empezó un, lo que se llama aquí messy church. Breakfast starts at nine. Empiezan con desayuno a las nueve. At nine, they, at nine thirty, they begin to play worship songs. Nueve y media empiezan a tocar música de alabanza. And maybe it's over by ten thirty. Y termina a todo a las diez y media. And you know what? The families are ¿Sabéis qué? In the a las ocho y media las familias están tocando la puerta. Yeah. Kids have been up since six. Los niños se han levantado a las seis. The only complaint is they wanted to run from seven o'clock in the morning. La única queja es que quieren que empiece 
A las 7 que termine a las 12. I'm just saying folks there's, there's a most incredible opportunity for us. Hay unas oportunidades increíbles ofrecer hospitalidad, amistad, support, apoyo. And uh, to, to, to uh, yeah, that's it. Fantastic. So, <laughs> okay, I want to call some people out. It's about time we stopped hearing my voice. Okay, Quiero so. llamar a algunas personas. <laughs> ben. Ben, where are you? Ben is a climatologist. A, a, no, a, a, a paleontoclimatologist. Paleo. Paleoclimatologist. I can't even say the word. Paleontologo. Okay. Ben, uh, I want uh, someone else to come out as well. Gary, where are you? From Madrid. Gary de Madrid. We spoke earlier. Where are you, Gary? Yeah, bien. Yeah, he's coming from the back. Um, uh, Tillman, uh, you, you're running a farm in Switzerland. Where are you? Yeah, please join us. Okay. Give these people, wonderful people, a round of applause. Please. Son personas maravillosas. Here's the thing which I want to encourage you with the most. Entonces quiero animaros a través de estas personas. I only spoke to six people since I arrived. Solo he hablado con seis personas desde And que you're llegué. All of them. Y estáis <laughs> conociendo a todos ellos. It's quite clear to me that whoever I talk to could easily be up here right now. Para mí, yo sé que cualquier Isn't persona con quien hablo podría estar aquí en el escenario. So we're just going to start. Vamos a empezar. Uh, with Ben. Con Ben. So ben is a, 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 a um, yeah, I can't say the word. No puedo ni decir la palabra, lo que es. Just tell Ben very quickly what it is you are passionate about and what you're doing in Scotland. ¿Cuál es tu pasión? ¿Qué haces en Escocia? Um, so it, it, we call it creation care, which is the best word we have for looking after the rest of creation with God. Eh, lo llamamos cuidado de la creación, que es la mejor manera de describir cómo podemos, junto con Dios, cuidar de la creación. We started a creation care hub in Wyoming, Paisley. Y ahí en, en Jotacum, en Paisley, hemos creado un hub de, de cuidado de la creación. And it, this vision started because I was in full-time frontier missions for 20 years, and then God said something important. Yo estuve durante 20 años en misiones de, de fronteras de países difíciles y luego Dios me habló. Um, the frontier missions was great, by the way. Fue genial lo que estuve haciendo. But God said, you understand the climate, why aren't you praying about it? Pero Dios me dijo, tú entiendes el clima, ¿por qué no estás orando por eso? So I don't know what to pray. Y dije, pues no sé qué orar. Because I didn't understand that God cared so much about everything else he made. Porque no entendí que Dios en realidad se preocupa mucho por todo lo que Él ha creado. And the journey then of finding it all the way through the Bible Entonces vi que esto aparece en toda la Biblia means that actually it's part of our discipleship. Y es parte de nuestro discipulado. And as we see young people, some very, very fearful and concerned about uh, these issues, y vemos que hay muchos jóvenes que, que tienen mucho temor acerca de todos estos asuntos globales. It's not that the issues aren't big. No es porque estos no sean temas importantes. It's that God really, really cares and has ways through. Dios se preocupa por esto y tiene soluciones. It'd be different if it's something God didn't care about. Sería diferente si fuesen cosas de, de lo que Dios no, no se preocupa. But God has a plan and ways for us to look after his planet together. Dios tiene un plan y tiene maneras en que podemos cuidar de su planeta juntos. And in the end, creation gets redeemed under Christ. Y al final, la creación también se redime. First Colossians, um, sorry, Colossians for first chapter. En Colosenses 1. It's all redeemed. And also in Revelation. Todo se redime también en Apocalipsis. Oh, yeah, so... <laughs> Cop 26. Um, after I started saying why, what we're supposed to pray about, the next few weeks God said, and you need to pray for COP26, which is a UN climate conference. Entonces el Señor me dijo que tenía que orar acerca de COP26, que es una conferencia sobre el clima organizado por Naciones Unidas. So this happened in Glasgow in 21. Ocurrió en Glasgow en 2021. Um, we did a big outreach for about 80, uh, mainly young people, um, on the streets of Glasgow. Y hicimos un, una campaña evangelística allí en las calles de Glasgow. Y alguien dijo, Jotacum, puedes entrar a la conferencia. Oh, thank God. Oh, but we couldn't. Pero resulta que en realidad no pudimos entrar a la conferencia. Pero God said there's another way. So another organization got us uh, badges, UN badges, to go in. Pero otra organización nos dio la manera de Same entrar issue. a esa conferencia. With 
together. You couldn't have done it alone. O sea, lo mismo con uh, interdenominational, interorganizational. Hay que colaborar con otras organizaciones. And you could pray that, we, that while I'm Scotland gets the badges, we've got, we've submitted our application to be able to bring uh, people every year to future while I'm uh, UN COPs. Entonces hemos hemos hecho una solicitud para poder asistir cada año, así que podéis orar por eso que nos den la acreditación. Because, because this is the biggest gathering of humanity. It's 40,000 people from every single nation every year. Son 40,000 personas de todas las naciones cada año. Fantastic. Genial. And you know, uh, yeah. Listen, you're not going to go to COP, maybe. No vais a ir a COP con él. But it's your story. Pero es vuestra historia And también. The reason why I wanted to give profile to it y is quería that traerlo aquí it becomes part of our genetic code. Porque luego es algo de parte de nuestro código genético. So, so we are committed to climate change. Estamos comprometidos con esto. So we were at COP26. Estuvimos en COP26. Yes, sí, de verdad. And sí, sí, sí. And 27. And 27. Y en el 27 uh, and, éramos uh, tres, pero esto, estuvimos movement, ahí. We are completely and totally committed to mobilizing humanity uh, for a better, better planet. Entonces, yeah. como movimiento, estamos comprometidos Straight con away, movilizar a personas por un planeta mejor. It's one of the most beautiful openings to a conversation about faith. <laughs> y es una manera so de why? abrir la conversación Because para hablar de la fe. ¿Por qué? Porque creemos. We are, we are here only for a season. One day we will be with the Lord, but the planet has to remain. Estamos aquí por un tiempo, luego Amen. estaremos Wonderful. con el Señor, pero Now, el planeta person, se queda. Thank you. I, the second person I want to welcome uh, is uh, Gary from Quiero Madrid. Quiero dar la bienvenida a Gary uh, de Gary Madrid. Gary spends most of his time actually outside of Madrid. Y pasa mucho everywhere. tiempo viajando. But uh, experienced the same trauma that St. Paul did. Pero experimentó el mismo trauma que San Gary Pablo. Was locked up, Estaba en el confinamiento, locked in, encerrado. Locked out. <laughs> and was a very unhappy man. Y estaba muy descontento. <laughs> and then God stepped in. Tell us what happened. Y luego Dios entró. A ver qué pasó. Yeah, well, our city, just in the outskirts of Madrid, had the privilege, and I say that sincerely, of being the epicenter of COVID for Spain. Nuestra ciudad, donde está Jotacum, que está en las afueras de Madrid, tuvo el privilegio de ser el epicentro de COVID en Madrid y España. It didn't feel like it when I was agonizing for two weeks on the couch. No lo sentí como privilegio cuando estaba ahí agonizando dos semanas ahí And en mi sofá. Pretty much our whole community was infected with COVID. Y casi toda la comunidad cayó de golpe con el COVID. But uh, after, after, we got it out of the way. Pero es que lo tuvimos en, el, en los primeros días y ya se fue. And, and then, you know, what the future is before us, but we're locked down. Entonces teníamos todo el futuro delante de nosotros, pero estábamos confinados. And I could have been happy just being locked down. Podría haber estado contento estar ahí encerrado. Me and Diana and Jesus. Oh, that's perfect. Yo, mi mujer Diana, Jesús, perfecto. <laughs> but we had a whole bunch of young people in the YWAM Center. Yeah, like Mariette was saying. Pero teníamos un montón de jóvenes en la base, en el edificio, como ha dicho Mariette. Crazy evangelists, crazy uh, mercy people. Evangelistas locos, gente que con pasión por la misericordia. And the lockdown had wiped out our ministry. Y en realidad no pudimos hacer nada de nuestros ministerios. We could do mass evangelism or some of the programs we'd done for the neighborhood. No podíamos hacer eventos um, de evangelismo, no podíamos hacer los programas que estaban haciendo con los vecinos. So what do we do? What do we do? ¿Qué podemos hacer? We'll ask the Lord. Vamos a preguntar al Señor. And so the evangelist, the Lord said, you've got a balcony. You've got, actually we had a whole bunch of balconies. <laughs> a los evangelistas, el, el Señor dijo, tenéis balcones en With vuestro edificio. Over 50 families could see our balcony. We're in the highest point in our area. Nosotros estamos en el punto más alto. 50 familias to... pueden ver estos balcones. Forgive me. Uh, and it, uh, and it, it, this in Spanish. Huh? You're bilingual, aren't you? Yes, yes, I am, yes. It's okay, leave him in so Spanish. I, I just cut I'm, my translation. He's my boss, I'm used to translating him. <laughs> All right, so there we are. And, and um, so, so at 8 o'clock, we'd all come out, all, this, all over Spain, on our balconies, to applaud 
the, the hospital workers and emergency workers. En toda España a las 8 de la tarde salíamos todos para aplaudir a los que estaban trabajando en los servicios de emergencia. Spain is so solidarity, uh, you know, uh, we say Spain is so solidario. So yeah, España es muy so, solidario. So there we are applauding. Ahí estamos aplaudiendo. And the Holy Spirit says to the guys, hey, You can do your stuff out on the balconies. El Espíritu Santo dijo a los evangelistas, podéis hacer lo que soléis hacer aquí After en estos balcones. Applaud. So we began with put up our speakers and began to sing and sing happy birthday to the neighbors and all, connecting. Empezamos a hacer cosas como cantar cumpleaños feliz a, la, a los vecinos, cosas así. We began to share testimonies. Empezamos a contar We testimonios, some of our, some of our powerful dramas, algunos de los teatros tan poderosos que hacemos, Jesus, invitando a las personas a Jesús. Uh, y yo miraba desde mi casa y veía los balcones for, for y vi a dos de mis vecinos que llevamos años orando, hands, levantando la mano. Praying. Y orando para recibir a Jesús. Oh, wow. And so, anyways, that was great. And, and <laughs> bueno, fue <laughs> tremendo. <laughs> we just said, yeah, I'll, I'll try to keep it short. And so, and then, and then our, our mercy people are going like, well, we, we, what can we do, Lord? Y la gente con Ministerio de, de Misericordia dijo, ¿qué podemos hacer? We don't do head-on evangelism. No hacemos el evangelismo como hacen ellos. Said, well, you got? You got some food? Bueno, tenéis comida. Who are Los vecinos que estaban teniendo dificultades en so, comer. Well, why were, we weren't much farther ahead, you know. Bueno, tampoco teníamos mucha comida so, nosotros. Set out this table, you know, Pero out pusimos una mesita en la plaza with all the food that they could spare. con la comida que podíamos poner ahí. And, and then, Announced from the balcony. Y luego dijimos desde los balcones. If you need food, come and serve yourself. You know. Si tienes necesidad, ven y, y toma lo uh, que necesitas. But if you have extra food that you'd like to help the neighbors that don't have, come and put it on. Pero si tú tienes extra y quieres ayudar a tus vecinos, ven y, y deposita aquí también comida. El siguiente día tuvimos que poner dos mesas. So that way. The y empezamos the a neighbors. dar de comer al vecindario. Entonces fuimos al ayuntamiento. And um, we've been cooperating with the, with the uh, mayor for some time. Llevamos colaborando varios años en realidad. Neighborhood festivals and cleaning the streets and whatever. Haciendo festivales, limpiando las calles, etc. Said, Mr. Mayor, would you mind uh, validating us to go sponsor when we go out to the supermarkets and catch, uh, collect extra food? Entonces pedimos autorización para ir a los supermercados y recoge, Said, recoger yeah, comida. Then we'll distribute it on a given day. Y luego lo podemos distribuir en un día so, concreto. Yeah, so we had the town hall behind us. We collected a lot of food. People came and gave money. You know, just didn't know us. They just, I don't, I won't buy food and give it to you. Here, take the money. Entonces había personas que donaban comida, otros donaban dinero. And, and uh, with we all got, the churches in, yeah, we've in, got the churches uh, that we work with together, <laughs> eight or nine churches. Y teníamos ocho o nueve iglesias que colaboraban con Organized nosotros. It all. Lo organizamos todos. And then we had a big food distribution in a church. Y luego en una iglesia grande distribuimos toda esa comida. Evangelical churches, very difficult to get Spaniards into evangelical churches. Una iglesia evangélica. Es muy difícil que un español entre en una iglesia evangélica. But, as has been said earlier, they'll come for food. Pero... Venían por la comida. And the mayor came so he could be part of that distribution. That was y just, también vino el alcalde yeah. para estar allí. So wow. So on yeah, we go. Fantastic. So and 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 then because we couldn't get out of um, the confines of our county. Um, no pudimos salir de nuestra provincia. But we could get within the boundaries. We Pero could get dentro out. de la provincia podíamos Later movernos. Right. So the Lord said to us, "Okay, there's 14." Uh, towns that don't have any witness in it. Hay, había 14 ciudades sin testimonio evangélico. I want you to take your teams to go to those towns. 
Tomad los equipos, ir a estas See, ciudades. We were so good at going all over Spain with big outreaches. Podríamos salir por toda España con grandes campañas. Off to India, off to Africa. A la India, en África. But never to. Africa. Pero allí en la Comunidad de Madrid. So we ended up. Many people accept the Lord. Young people, most of them. Muchos jóvenes han aceptado a and Cristo. And then they wanted more training because we're keeping going back. Necesitaban más formación. So we started Alpha courses. Empezamos Alpha. And that's been growing and growing, and we have just yeah. Eso ha crecido exponencialmente. And then they needed to have a fellowship group, so we started cell groups, uh, you know, for sports Necesitaban people. Necesitaban grupos pequeños. Freakies. They have a group called Freakies. I don't know. Free Kingdom. And, oh, Free Kingdom or whatever. So in the end. It was so we and we now just started a community of faith at where we collecting all these groups together once a month, starting out with a food table and breakfast. Okay, so just Entonces like ahora tenemos Fantastic. una comunidad de fe de todos estos grupos pequeños. There, there are so many lessons in there, Gary. Hay um, tantas lecciones for ahí. Me, for me, the first one was to say thank God for COVID. Gracias por COVID. <laughs> locked up, locked in. No, God took away your air tickets. Entonces Dios quitó Basically, los billetes de avión. He tore, he tore up your bank card that you would use to buy them. <laughs> no tenías tarjeta bancaria siquiera para As comprarlas. As we say in the UK, you were grounded. <laughs> Estabas allí encerrado and sin mover. Has come an explosion of faith. Y ha venido una explosión de fe. And so that required being agile. Hace falta ser ágiles. Creative. Creativos. And deciding to have fun. Y divertirse también. Hey, we can do crazy things. We can Podemos hacer cosas locas. By singing to them. <laughs> Podemos salir a los balcones Just y cantar. Fun. I think sometimes our plans are too serious. A veces nuestros planes son muy serios. Actually, uh, the reason why Apple is such a great company. La razón por la que Apple es una buena empresa so about fun they can do. es porque siempre están pensando en, en qué podemos hacer que es divertido. And a big fun thing is to share hospitality. Y una cosa muy divertida <laughs> es compartir la hospitalidad. Now, one person knows how to do this more than anyone, and I don't know, what is your name? Santiago. Santiago. Great. Santiago and Til Tilman. Two. Yeah. So this is another random conversation or a divine appointment. <laughs> Esto es otra conversación random o cita divina que so tuve. Tillman has been on a very strange journey. Tillman ha estado en un viaje muy extraño. <laughs> okay. Uh, so it starts with a farm. That's a, that, a huge long story how you even got it. But I want to know what your vision was for hospitality in the farm and what's happened since. Empieza con una granja y quiero ver cuál es tu visión de hospitalidad con la granja y qué ha pasado desde entonces. Estoy en Suiza. Actually, we were getting ready to emigrate to an island at the coast of Morocco. Estamos preparándonos para emigrar a una isla en la costa de Marruecos. And then one morning prayer got set, look for a farm. Y Dios nos dio esta visión por una granja. And then we got swept into a farm in Switzerland. Entonces fuimos a una granja en Suiza. And then God said, stay here. Y Dios nos dijo, quedaos aquí. You go to that island later, but now stay here. Después podéis ir a la isla, pero por, por el momento quedaos aquí. I say, if you call, we go. Entonces yo dije, si tú llamas, yo voy. So we are in a little farm with a guest house. Estamos en una pequeña granja con una casita de huéspedes. And um, so we entered into that farm, literally not knowing the place, not knowing the farm, nothing. Entramos en ese sitio sin conocer la granja, sin saber nada. So we knelt down and said, God, why are we here? Y de de dijimos, ¿por qué estamos aquí, Dios? And then he, he showed me a vision of many youth and many missionaries. Y me, vio, me dio una visión de muchos jóvenes y muchos misioneros. It's very convenient, I love both. Y ahora tenemos <laughs> ambos. And then, uh, and then he told me, Don't reject anyone I send you. Y me dijo, no, re no rechaces a nadie que os envíe. And in, in this last one and a half years, we had more guests than in the last decade. In the last últimos 18 meses, hemos tenido más visitas que en la última década. We had over 150 guests show up out of nowhere. Más de 150 visitas que han surgido de la nada. They don't pay us. No nos pagan. <laughs> we pay them. <laughs> Nosotros les pagamos a ellos. If someone wants to give something, they're free to give, but we are there to give them. Si alguien quiere dar un donativo, lo pueden hacer, pero nosotros estamos ahí para darles a ellos. Some show up at 10 o'clock at night. I'm like, how do you know from us? And they say, I don't know. Someone gave me your number, and God told me you need to call that guy. 
A veces llegan a las 10 de la noche y decimos, ¿cómo habéis sabido de nosotros? Y dice, pues no lo sé, alguien me dio el teléfono y sentí de parte de Dios que debía llamar. A veces es difícil apartar tu propia agenda y decir, ah, vale, pasa. But, oh, what happens? It's amazing. Pero lo que pasa es asombroso. Like A veces estamos hasta las dos de la madrugada profetizando los unos sobre los otros. God said, Go buy a car. Dios nos dijo, ve y compra un coche. So I end up witnessing to the Muslim seller. Entonces estoy ahí testificando al vendedor de coches que es musulmán, how God to us today. compartiendo cómo Dios nos habla hoy. And, and he's like, yeah, it's nothing for me. Y dice, no, no, eso no es para mí. And then his, his Italian friend says, but it's for me. Pero su amigo italiano dice, ah, pero sí, sí es para mí. I've been seeking God for six months. I can't find him. Llevo seis meses buscando a Dios y no le encuentro. I need to have what you have. Give Necesito it to lo que tú tienes. Dámelo. Entonces, si tú crees en tu corazón y confieses con tu boca, serás salvo. He says, well, yeah, Buddha, y dijo, bueno, Allah, ya, Jesus, Buda, Allah. Me, God. Pero Dios. And I said, well, I can only help you with Jesus. Y yo le dije, solamente te puedo ayudar con Jesús. I said, ask your wife, Mary, Barbara, Jessica, does it matter? She's going to tell you. Y, y le dije, bueno, tu mujer, María, Jessica, ¿importa? He's like, you got a point, bro. He <laughs> said, <laughs> tiene razón. <laughs> so he said, okay, I confess Jesus now. I want to get saved now. Vale, voy a confesar a Jesús ahora y quiero ser salvo ahora. And I said, okay, if you're serious, you come to my house. Yo, vale, si vas en serio, ven a mi casa. Because now I got guest rooms. <laughs> ahora tengo un lugar para ellos. And we're going to tell you, and then we're going to pray, the Holy Spirit will fill you, then we're going to baptize you, and your ears will be open, your eyes will be open, and you have what I have. Entonces ven a mi casa, te vamos a contar, vamos a orar por ti, serán abiertos tus ojos, tú vas a tener lo mismo que yo, vas a ser lleno del Espíritu Santo. Vino a casa, él era de la mafia, y se supone que él debía ascender al, al trono en la mafia, pero él dijo, yo pertenezco al lado de la luz, no al, al lado oscuro. Y el Espíritu Santo me, di, me dijo orar por él. Entonces dije, pues todavía no he explicado el Evangelio. He's like, no, I need to pray. no, no, pero hay que orar. Entonces sube al lado de este italiano. Puts his hand and prays, y pone las manos, el and niño. Italian goes, What is this? I'm getting hot. El italiano dice, me, me estoy poniendo con mucho <laughs> calor just, en mi cuerpo. ¿Qué pasa? Yo dije que iba a orar por el Espíritu Santo, te ha llenado el Espíritu Santo y, el, y su fuego. And now he's gonna clean up inside of you. Y ahora te va a limpiar todo. <laughs> so, and the guy is looking for discipleship. Entonces está buscando el discipulado. Y dijo, yo puedo venir a ti porque me da miedo la iglesia, pero puedo venir a tu casa. Fantastic. Do you feel the Lord saying something here? <laughs> ¿Crees que el Señor está diciendo algo aquí? I think, it's, uh, I think we need to be uh, ready to move into worship. Where are the musicians? Tenemos que estar preparados para mover hacia around. la adoración. So I've got just one, one thought to Un share. pensamiento. So the constant theme, whichever the trend is you want to look at, is that hospitality, I believe, it's always been, it's always been at the bedrock of the YWAM movement. Entonces And creo que lo, lo importante para vosotros como movimiento for es hospitalidad season. para esta próxima If temporada. Siempre ha sido importante, pero hay un más ahora. Mientras vienen los músicos, quiero compartir una última cosa. Um, it's, it's about focus. Se trata del enfoque. And it's about discernment. El discernimiento. And uh, you know, there's so many companies talk about an 80-20 rule. Muchas compañías hablan de la regla 80-20. I, I discovered it is actually a, a divine principle if you 
bend the maths a little bit. Pero en realidad es un principio divino si, so, si cambias un poco las matemáticas. The principle is that the Lord took a small number of loaves and fishes and fed 5,000. El Señor tomó una pequeña cantidad de peces y panes y, y se multiplicó. We know comes an immense power. De cosas muy pequeñas sale un poder enorme. And uh, what is the, the, tr the truth which uh, has been taught in business schools all over the world, but Jesus practiced it too. La verdad que se ha enseñado en las empresas de negocios y el Jesús también lo enseñó. Is that we pray for discernment. Oramos por discernimiento. For the Lord to show us where the greatest impact actually is. In que el Señor, Señor nos muestre dónde reside el mayor impacto. And invest in that. Y invertimos en eso. Um, so the, the 80-20 rule is that you know, McDonald's La regla get, 80-20 gets 80% of its sales from 20% of its customers. En McDonald's, por ejemplo, el 80% de las ventas proceden de 20% de sus clientes. The, the 80-20 rule says that actually if you have a committee of 10 people, two people do nearly all the work. Si tienes un comité de 10 personas, dos personas hacen casi todo el trabajo. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you only need 10% of the time to really... Um, and actually, if you think about it, I mean, I wonder, you know, Jesus only ministered for three years. Jesús solo ministró durante tres años. A small proportion of his total adult life. Una pequeña porción de su vida adulta. We can debate about the exact percentage of his adult life, but Podríamos it's... Debatir cuando, qué porcentaje maybe a fifth, era? Who un, knows? Quin, maybe una quinta a, parte, it's, it's quizás. No mucho más. And Jesus had 72, but he really worked with 12. Tenía 72 personas, pero en realidad trabajó con Dios 12. Y de esos 12, he knew in the eternal strategy, en la estrategia eterna, three that were extremely important había tres personas muy importantes spend extra time para pasar más tiempo con esas personas. Of the three, there was one, y de esos John. tres había uno, que era Juan. Over and over again, we see this. I, I vez tras vez this vemos esto. En mi propia vida, y creo que en la Less than an hour talking with any of you, we lo he descubierto en mi vida y creo que hablando con vosotros en una hora lo descubriríamos. There are probably some things which you do, Hay algunas cosas que haces tú which you consider on the edge, perhaps, of what you do. y quizás piensas que están en el borde de todo lo que haces. Pero cuando encuentras al Señor en su gloria te vas a sorprender how central they were. por cómo esas cosas eran tan I'll centrales. You, give you an example. Por Some, ejemplo, someone came up to me the other day Alguien se me acercó el otro día y dijo, muchas gracias por lo que has compartido. Y creo que fue hace 10 años. It was X, y, Z place. Era esto. I don't remember being there. Ni me acuerdo haber estado ahí. <laughs> she said, what you said was so profound. Si lo que dijiste fue tan profundo. And I'm smiling and I'm praying like man. <laughs> Yo me estoy so sonriendo, <laughs> orando. <laughs> No sé quién es. I don't remember her. I don't remember the conversation. No la recuerdo a ella ni recuerdo And la conversación. It turns out I think I shared probably equivalent of one verse of scripture and three sentences. Quizás compartí un versículo, tres frases que le enough. dije, pero fue suficiente. James talks about the rudder of the ship. Y Santiago habla del timón de un barco. Just tell you one story to encourage you. And uh, uh, this Una is to alongside para this animaros. call to hospitality. But it's a call to being effective. Hay llamado de hospitalidad y para so, ser eficaces. A very good friend of ours is called Tanya. Un buen, buena amiga nuestra, Tanya. She is a nurse. Es enfermera. And I discovered in our church. Y descubrí en nuestra iglesia. Wherever we went into people's homes with hospitality. Cuando entramos a las casas con hospitalidad. They go make a cup of coffee. Harían una taza de café. Walk around the living room as I do. Y yo paseaba por su salón. I'm learning. Estoy aprendiendo. Person, y como soy muy curioso, sé que no debería hacerlo. Pero veo una tarjeta así de este tamaño en, en un estante. Uh, you know, a card or card. No sé si era de cumpleaños, nice aniversario, card. parece bonito. And I pick it up. Lo miro. <laughs> In there are words of blessing. Y hay palabras de bendición en esa It's tarjeta. It's a prayer, una escritura, una some oración, soft words of algunas palabras de ánimo It was to my friend. a mi amiga. Um, what do you think I felt? ¿Qué es lo que yo sentí? I am blessed. A mí Crazy. me bendice. It's not my card. No es mi tarjeta. She comes back, Ella vuelve. 
I'm blessed inside. Yo I've siento esa bendición. Put up your hands if you've had an encouraging card in the last 20 years. ¿Has tenido una tarjeta de bendición en los últimos 20 años? Okay, confession time. Put up your hands if when the card has been on the shelf for maybe five years. Y quizás si lleva esa tarjeta en el estante cinco años. And you move house. Y cambias de casa. It slips inside your Bible. Quizás lo metes dentro de la Biblia. Or something slips a book or your o Bible. Put un up libro. Your hand if you've done that. Lo has hecho. Put up your hands if you have discovered an old note more than 10 years old. Y si has descubierto una nota diez Put años up your hands después. If it blessed you again. Te bendijo otra vez. I said to Tanya. Yo le I dije a Tanya. Ojalá tuviera tu ministerio. How long does it take you to write? And everywhere I go, I see your notes. ¿Cuánto tardas en escribir estas tarjetas? Por donde yo voy, veo estas tarjetas. I say, this is a ministry. Es un ministerio. Says, no, no, no. Hijo, no, no, no. My no. ministry, I'm a nurse. Mi ministerio, yo soy I enfermera. Alpha. I am on the pastoral team. Estoy en el equipo pastoral. I'm an elder in the church. Estoy en la iglesia. Yes, Tania, this, sí. How many? How long did it take you to write one? Pero cuánto says, has tardado en escribir esto? Oh, two minutes. Dos minutos. Is it how many do you write each week? ¿Cuántas escribes cada semana? Maybe one, two, three. No sé, uno, dos, tres. So, so you spend 15 minutes a week doing this. Entonces 15 minutos a la semana haciendo so, esto. I believe these notes have more impact for the kingdom of God. You're talking about support for someone who has mental health problems, who is depressed. Creo Every que... time they see your note, they are blessed again. Esto tiene apoyo y, y ánimo vez tras notes. vez para las personas. They find it ten years later and they are again. Lo encuentran diez años después y aún están siendo Everyone bendecidos. Who comes to their house when you are making coffee is blessed. Todo el mundo que viene a su iglesia mientras tú haces el café siente esa bendición. I wish I had this ministry. She Ojalá says, tuviera este she ministerio. Says it's not a Anyone can write notes. Dijo no es un ministerio cualquiera puede escribir una nota. It's her 80-20. Does that? It's it's her 0.5%, 95.99%. Este 80, it takes 15 minutes to do this. So what I said to her hacerlo. is, this is the word of the Lord to you. Y le dije, esta es la palabra del Señor para ti. I want you to spend half an hour a week. Pasa media hora haciéndolo. <laughs> yeah. Double the effectiveness of her ministry with Sería? just 15 minutes a week. Does that make sense? Doble de eficacia pasando un poco más so de tiempo. One of the greatest things we can do to help each other is to hold up a mirror to each other. Una de las cosas más it. grandes es levantar un espejo a los demás para que ellos pueden ver What's lo que name? no ven. What is your name? ¿Cómo te llamas? Stefan. Stefan will not be able to find his own 80-20. Stefan no puede ver por sí mismo cuál es ese porcentaje 80-20. But he can together. Pero junto con otro, sí lo puede ver. Entonces tenemos que levantar el espejo say, para ayudar a la gente. No, it's nothing. It's nothing. No. Esto que tú haces, <laughs> tú lo haces de forma sencilla. So Pero es muy importante. Esa es mi oración para we, vosotros. As we Lord for a fresh anointing in the ministry, as we ask him for fresh direction, Vamos a pedir una nueva unción, nuevo enfoque. Vamos a considerar qué significa hospitalidad para nosotros como movimiento. Que el Señor os revele cuál es ese ministerio tuyo. Las cosas pequeñas que tú haces que van a transformar tu ministerio. Entonces vamos a empezar a orar, vamos a pasar a Dick. Vamos a ver dónde nos lleve el Señor, así que nos ponemos de pie.